There we go. All right, we are not going to do the full intro just because the game has already started. So, um, the other game ran long, so we're not doing the full intro. So, we're just going to hop right in, but just want to have it there. But with that being said, thank you guys for tuning in. And let's call some UFL football again. Round number two, St. Louis against Michigan. Let me just get everything situated and set up. Here we go. Second down ball is at the 40, where are we at? 48 yard line of St. Louis. Here we go. Let's get everything situated again. All right, give me one quick second to get everything situated and then we'll be good to go. It's going to be third and about five at Michigan's 49. All right. So thank you guys for tuning in. Again, my name is Jerry R9. Uh, if you were on my last stream where we did the game between Michigan and St. Louis, thank you. So or between the game between, there we go. The game between um, Birmingham and Arlington. Final score, Birmingham takes a 27-14. Thank you guys for tuning in on that one. We are now back with game number two, St. Louis against the Michigan Panthers. So we have third and six right now. Nothing, nothing game. Mark at the 49-48 yard line. McCarron, four wide, one on the far side, three on the near side. McCarron steps up, fires, caught well short of the six, though. Well short of the six, caught by Darius Shepard. Stop there. Coming from Bryce Tornan. Brings up fourth and let's call it three at the 46-yard line. How's it going, Golden? Still looking at the stream. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being here. Follow me to your UFL stream. There you go. There you go. Again, apologies I couldn't get on sooner. Obviously, the um, the other game ran long. So, can't do two streams at the same time, unfortunately. Wish I could, but there's no way to do it. No way to do it. All right, fourth and three. The punt here. They're from Sterling Hoffrichter. This punt is a short one. He Panthers ran into, ran into each other. To be down at the two. Now I gotta say that no one on Michigan touched that punt, but what should have been an easy, easy fair catch at the 16 turns into Michigan starting this drive in terrible field position at their own two yard line because of miscommunication on special teams. All right, with that being said, now we have a moment to breathe. So, thank you so much for tuning in. Never been to a JD9 I've seen before. How it works like this? Ask me any questions on the channel. I'll be happy to answer about anything and everything. If you're a member, thank you so much for being a YouTube member. You get to show your support with a lot of cool perks, including your name at the end of each video, your name that's scrolling on the top of the screen right now. And on top of that, you get to use emojis in the chat. Uh, vote on the poll. Who do you think is going to win this game? Do you think it's the Panthers? Do you think it's the Battlehawks? Battlehawks, one of the favorites this year to do a lot of good things in the UFL. And again, use my promo code um, on PrizePix, Gator9, 100% deposit match up to 100 bucks. Use that promo code. Helps the channel out a lot. My scoreboard should be what Fox uses. I can't, like, do that necessarily. Um, I want to have my own look, too. That's the other thing. I want to have my own look. Let's see. Fair from 2023, more football is a good thing. Yep, that, that's a good way of looking at it. More football is always a good thing. Why not? Why not? Why not? Went to a Wildhawks game in 2022, so you're room for them. Um, I'm guessing me 2023. But yeah, no, Battlehawks have a, have a giant fan base. Giant fan base. Most popular team in the UFL by far. In the NBA, should St. Louis be East or West? That one could go either way. That could go either way. I would say East on that one just to be close to like Chicago and, and whatnot and Indiana, but I have no problem with putting them in the West there. Am I the only one that likes the scoreboards? Scoreboards where the numbers are side by side like Fox or NBC? No, that, that's a... It's not like... I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that. Two days ago, Jay Williams claimed on ESPN that high-level pro people are questioning Steph Curry's leadership after Draymond Green got ejected on Wednesday. How does that make sense? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense. So Curry was, like, visibly frustrated. Like, you can only do so much. You can only do so much. Let's check this punt again. Again, Michigan, they just ran into each other. Did that ball get touched by Michigan? I do not believe it did. 
So just finishing about the two yard line. Yep, just finishing about the two. All right, I'm gonna close the poll here just because we're now back in the action. 82% of you run with the Battle Hawks on this one. I wanna know so far my picks today. I have the Battle Hawks winning this game. Yeah, St. Louis did cost NBA millions with the spirits. They um with the the merger and everything. Now, Karen, not, nothing special so far. Nothing special so far. You know, St. Louis goes to NBA Millions with, when the Spirits weren't allowed in. Okay, that play got blown up. And someone jumped the gun. Someone jumped the gun big time there. <laughs> I think Travis Feeney might have gotten a bit too good of a jump. So instead of 1st and 10, they get some breathing room 1st and 5 now at the 7-yard line. And get any donations to get your question right away. Otherwise, I just go in the order that I see them. And thank you so much for tuning in. No, they did not paint the end zones. They did for Houston. Houston will have painted end zones tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know how the models are doing right now, but I'm, I'm guessing based on that, it's not good. Too wide. The give by Perry. This one goes to Matthew Colburn. Gain of two, second and three at the nine. And you can see the schedule of games that we're doing on that ticker below. We got every single game this week. We're doing every game except for the night game on Saturday next week between Arlington and St. Louis. I'll be at the Final Four. But we're doing pretty much every game. Again, we're going all in on the UFL, as you can see with the helmet cases behind me. As you can see with everything, we're going all in on this. So, thank you guys for being here with me. Thank you guys for being here with me. Second and four in the flat. Well overthrown. Incomplete pass. Intended target on the play was Colburn. Brings up third and four. I swear the, the, the clock looks darker on this scoreboard. Like it's a bit tougher to see the clock. It's a different yellow. Who won the first game? Did Ontario reveal an XFL championship banner? I don't know if they revealed the championship banner. Um... But the first game was won by Birmingham, 27-14. I think the, the football team, unironically, was the best name of the three. Unironically was the best name. Yep, Jake Budd is the, the former Michigan tight end. He is semi poor for this one. Perry, pump fakes, fire, sideline shot. It is incomplete, and Perry is one for six to start this game off. Having a rough outing so far. Flyer out there, intended target was Marcus Sims, the wideout. Last year... Four catches, 28 yards. Didn't do a whole lot, but he is one of the top receivers on the team on the depth chart. Looking to make a much bigger impact this year than he did last year. Brings up fourth and four. It's a quick three and out. And they'll have to pump this one away. Was the dome outdated in St. Louis the moment it was played in 95? To some extent, yeah. To some extent. Top four teams in the UFL. I would say Birmingham, St. Louis. Um, I would say Birmingham, St. Louis. Arlington and DC. I would say those are the top four. The punt is fielded to the 50, 45. We got some room down to the 41 yard line. Nice return there. St. Louis got some great field position. From Darius Shepard on the return. It's a net of 34 yards. And thank you again for tuning in, Golden Steel. Thank you again so much. Yeah, I'd say I'd say DC is four. I'd say Memphis five. And then I would say Houston, San Antonio, and Michigan. I would say that's my ranking right now. But it's very fluid, obviously. Quadruple, double in NBA game again? Wemby's going to do it soon. I could see Wemby doing it. <laughs> Honestly, give it three years, Wemby will do it at some point. Wemby will do it. All right, so St. Louis ball at the 43-yard line. When we get back, favorite MLB player, mine's Jazz Chisholm. I'd probably say Corbin Carroll. I'd say Corbin. Every same built in the 90s has a short life or is falling apart now. Uh, not everyone. Camden Yards. Camden Yards is never getting torn down. Are the UFO games on any streaming platforms? They're on Fox. Um, the next games, tomorrow they're going to be on ESPN. Tomorrow's games are ESPN games, so... Keep that in mind. Tomorrow's games will be ESPN. Today's games are Fox. You also see behind me, we got the Michigan Panthers helmet and the St. Louis Battlehawks helmet. 
You got all the helmets from all the XFL teams, USFL teams, UFL teams. Often jokes about my old classmates think I'm GG now. <laughs> Had to be a Jaguars fan to do it. A 30-30 season, I'd say Acuna. I'd say Acuna could do it. Corbin could also do it. He's had a rough start to the season, but I think Corbin could do it. Yeah, ESPN Plus is doing the games too. Yes, the games will be on ESPN Plus. And you can see on the screen, hey, donation, get to your question right away. Um, if you're a YouTube member, thank you so much. You can see your name scrolling on the top line on that ticker. You can see the odds for all the games in this entire season. Again, use the promo code Gator9, prize picks, 100% deposit match, up to 100 bucks. Someone think you're the one behind the channel. I've been mistaken for other YouTubers before. It's funny. Like, someone said, like, did you do a video about, like, Navy ships? Like, you're, did you record a voiceover for a video about Navy ships? I'm like, no. Well, the UFL game is on ABC. That's a good question. I honestly don't know. Should the NFL boycott games on Nickelodeon after the whole controversy with Quiet on set? No, I don't, I don't think so. Because the people in charge are gone. The people in charge are gone. Yeah, there will be games on ABC. Next Saturday is going to be on ABC. We're going to have week three games on ABC. Yeah, there's going to be ten games on ABC. Including a playoff game. Play action. McCarron goes down at the 45-yard line. Nowhere to go. It's Kai Nakua, the safety, coming in on the stop. Loss of six, second and 16. Play action, I think they were trying to get play action in the flat, trying to hit Jacob Sailors. That just was too slow to develop. It brings up second and 16. Second 15, I should say, at the 44-yard line. You give up the middle. Not a whole lot there. Trying to push the pile forward, but it's going to go down to the 41-yard line. Brings up third and 12. College football playoff games on ABC? Um, not unless they do two at the same time. I don't think they will. Who else should replace Nance for Masters coverage in the future? Oh, that's a good question. Um, he's not retiring for a while, but... I would probably say Brian Anderson. I'd probably say Brian Anderson. Third and 12, they send four. McCarron, deep shot, wide open, break down the coverage, and he missed times it. Oh, that should have been six. That should have been six. I think Blake Jackson stopped running for a second. I'm not sure that was on McCarron. I think Jackson stopped running. I want to see this again. I think if Jackson just kept running. Shake and bake. Nah, just a bit too far. A bit too far outstretched. Nate Brooks on the coverage. Oh, man, that was close. So, great field position for St. Louis. They do nothing with it. They go three and out. I don't know if I need Sun Golf. Fourth and 12. This punt here by Hoff Richter. Fair caught at the nine-yard line. So, that's where Michigan takes over. Pretty similar field position to what they had last time. That's a bad miss on that throw by McCarron. That could have been six. Probably should have been six. 242. First game you attended was Broncos Rams on Labor Day. Oh, that was a great game. What was that? 41 36? That was a phenomenal game. Man, that's a good first game to go to. Yeah, Nickelodeon's pretty much now um, SpongeBob and Loud House. All right, I'm going to get a glass of water really quickly, refill, um, just because I did not get a chance to do that before. So give me one second. I'm actually just running to the... I'm going to run to the bathroom really quickly, refill my water. So give me one quick second. I'll be back soon.
All right, perfect timing. Perfect timing. Yep, Eganator's in charge. Hopefully you all behave for Eganator. Hopefully you all behave for him. <laughs> Gonna pull Lamar Jackson real quick. <laughs> That'd be a quick Lamar. Thoughts on the Caleb Williams pink phone drama? Oh, it's such a non-story. It's such a non-story. It's like, what are we doing? What are we doing here? Like, it's, it means absolutely nothing. Just trying to find anything to, like, tear him down at this point. It's like, what are we doing? First down play action. Perry finally completes a pass. Now just two for seven. The catch there made by Marcus Sims. Again, four catches last year. That was it. But he's a starting receiver this year. Second and let's call two. Where are the spreads and over-under for the games? Um, they're scrolling on the screen. They're scrolling on there, all the all the things. Um, over-under for this one. Hang on. Second and two. Let me do it. Like, all the... Let me let me do it. All the... um. All the odds are scrolling in again. Prize picks. Use my promo code. 100% pump match up to 100 bucks. That'll be a first down. So the spreads for this one, over under, you are looking at St. Louis favored by seven. You're looking at 41 and a half on the over under. Money line, St. Louis minus 310, Michigan plus 250. That's what you're looking at here. First down, the 21 yard line. After that gain of four. And then you can see again the, the, the prop bets in terms of the players that you can you can pick on for more or less receiving yards, passing yards, rushing yards. Again, promo code JG or promo code Gator nine hundred percent prize match up to hundred bucks on prize picks. Gain a five on that throw. Devin Ross on the grab. Moving to the twenty six yard line. So Perry one for his first five, two for his last two. Actually, might be having something going here. Seems like most of the USFL teams are playing games on Fox and XFL and ESPN and ABC. Uh, I think that's just coincidence. I think that's that's mainly coincidence. More just what days they have and they're, they're like available. Yeah, Iowa USC semi would be epic. Iowa LSU quarterfinals is gonna be. Oh man, that's gonna be a juggernaut if that happens. Play action caught on the out route, first down on the play. Gain of nine. Moving to the thirty-five yard line. Trey Quinn on the grab. Should put it at the 36. It will be a first down. So Michigan, this drive started at their own nine yard line. Got something going. At the very least, he got some breathing room. First down at the 37. Handoff. This one, he's got some room. First down and then some into the second level down into St. Louis territory at the 45 yard line. It is Wes Hills running down that hill for a first down. That should take us to the end of the quarter. Wes Hills. Played for the New Orleans Breakers last year. Phenomenal runner. Obviously, the Breakers not a team in 2024. But 2023, Wes Hills, one of the best running backs in the league. It's either him or Marable. Eight or 679 rushing yards. Led the league. All USFL selection. He is going to be a good addition to this Michigan team. Which needed a lot of firepower. So Michigan had their struggles on offense. Second worst offense in football last year in the USFL. And this will help. The XFL players look physically smaller than the USFL players. I'm not sure about that. The worst non-story involving sports. I, I mean, I, I don't know, like, the, the worst non-story. I, I have a funny story involving sports. I, I might do a video on it at some point. I I just have to figure out how I would structure it. But I, I think I could. I think I could. Um, I was doing this while I was researching for the... Um, I was doing this while I was researching, like, the, the Chargers that I put the other day. And... Oh, man. So the Chargers had this promotion. Worst promotion of all time. Has to be. Up there with the worst promotion of all time. And I don't say that lightly. They had a promotion called Cap Day. And what it was was that every fan in attendance got a baseball cap. Seems innocent enough, right? Seems totally fine. Um, seems like a standard promotion. Well, the problem, I don't know how this happened. 
was that uh, I, I kid you not this is a real this is a real thing you can look it up um, I'm not sure you can find it on like Google but if you go on, like newspapers.com you can find it probably when they ordered the caps they got like 62,000 caps and 8,000 of them said with the logo on it Minnesota Timberwolves now I, I don't know how you got 8,000 Timberwolves hats you're the Chargers and running a promotion. I, I don't know how you got 8,000 Timberwolves hats, but I, I might have to do a video on that. But yeah, that's um, well, that's the gist of it. That's the gist of it. They literally did a cap day and they didn't have enough caps because 8,000 of them said Minnesota Timberwolves on it. Because the Chargers and the Timberwolves are apparently the same thing. Well, I stream the game live. I'm legally not allowed to show the game. I will get my channel taken down. I will... Breaks every copyright law in the book. I'm legally not allowed to show the game. But I can tell you the game is on Fox. And if you can find a stream that shows Fox, um, I will not be opposed. <laughs> and thank you for all the people um, in the stream right now. Thank you so much. A sweet victory documentary. Probably later this year. Probably later this year. We'll see. Maybe like for the, for the anniversary of Band Geeks when that comes out. Yeah, I, I think I need to do that story at some point. Probably this week. Did Fanatics learn from that promotion? <laughs> they took the wrong lessons from it. You know, I, I wish I could show, but obviously it would be it would break every law, law in the book. I, I'm actually curious. I'm actually curious. Um, who else is, like, streaming? Like, am I the... Who is streaming the game right now? Is there anyone, like, am I the only one that's, like, live for this? Like, or, like, like, am I, like, the biggest person that's live for this? I think I'm the biggest person that's live for this. I think I have the most viewers of anyone that's live for this right now. So, I think I so much. Again, this is the place to watch. If I, like, I've seen people, like, I've seen some people that have, like, 20 people watching right now, like, 5 people watching. I think I've got the most, which is crazy to me. Thank you so much for loving the sport, guys. Thank you so, so much. Player was work, or friend was working for the Twins and they scheduled a bobblehead night for a player and they came in, he got traded. Oh, that stinks. That's happened a few times. QB keeper, EJ Perry, gain of three, brought down there by Freedom. The best was the... The best one by far. It was a decade ago. The best was the, the White Sox promotion where they, um, they had white ponchos with hoods on them. And it was raining that night, so what you saw was just a bunch of people in white ponchos with white hoods. And you can you can, you can pretty much get an idea of what that looked like. It was not what they were going for. Second and seven. The clock is not working on the score bug for Fox, but I will say that Wes Hills ran for five down to the 37 yard line. I'm the Tom Crossy of the UFL. <laughs> that would not be a bad title to have. That would not be a bad title to have. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're gonna be we're going all out for the UFL. Obviously, no one's got the sap that I have for for UFL, which is awesome. I'm so grateful for this. Like, thank thank you to, to you guys for making this happen because this is awesome. Again, we're doing every game this year for the most part. Some exceptions, but for the most part, I'd say 90% of the games we're doing. Third down, handoff, keeping himself as Perry, and Perry's gonna go nowhere. The RPO, the read option read completely all the way by the Battle Hawks. Willie Harvey, loss of five, and instead of possibly going for it, they're probably going to have to pump this one away. More than seven of the 42. That was how it was last season, too. You were the channel for live reactions and commentary for the USFL games. Yeah, but it wasn't, like, the only channel. They're, like, it, it was mixed. Plus, I think Perna did some, and Grossi did the game that Bankert was in. Yeah, Perna did some games, so... Iowa is... It's at half. They're up by 13, I think. I think it's what, 45-32? Well, the streamers that have more than me, um, they're not actually streaming the game. Fair call at the 8-yard line. The streamers that have more than me um, that I'm looking at, they're... If, like, if you look at the... If you look at, like, the thumb... Like, not the thumbnail, but, like, if you look at, like, their video, it's just... It takes you to, like, an illegal website to, to show the game. They're not actually doing anything. Um, like, I'm, like, I'm assuming you're looking at channels like 
Jinwoo Guild Center stream. Like, if you look at that, it says, like, the whole thing is just watch this streaming on the link provided in live chat and just a box covering it up. Um, as I'm tech, yeah, there's another just box covering up. Like, they're actually showing the game. There's another one with Asm Tech. Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking like like the stuff that I'm doing. I don't think there's anything... I'm, I'm assuming that's what you mean. I'm assuming that's what you mean. Most underrated Jaguar ever? Ooh, that's a good question. I would say Daryl Smith. Daryl Smith was super underrated. People talk about the great linebackers in Jags history. And you talk like Paul Puzlesen, you talk Telvin, you talk um, Kevin Hardy, you talk Mike Peterson. Now, Peterson was super underrated. You, you talk those guys. Daryl Smith does not get the love that he deserves. The other guy, underrated, Brian Walters was our wing corvette in the mid-2010s. Brian Walters was our wing corvette, third down machine. The other guy that will be forgotten for, from history, but he was an influential part in, the, in that team. Super influential part in this team. Um, like people were going to talk about Saxonville defense and Fournette and all those guys people will not talk about I, I think they forgot about him um, and like 10 years down the road we're going to forget about him fullback Tommy Bohannon Tommy Bohannon that run doesn't happen in 2017 Tommy Bohannon um, huge part on that team I love that guy as a fullback he was um, he was really good Tommy Bohannon is, um, it's good. So, well, Cardinals versus Tigers outscore Beahawks Panthers. Um, I mean, the rate's going, why, why not? The rate is going, why not? <laughs> Fact or fiction, ESPN is an exclusive Monday night game in 2025. I don't think so. No, I, I don't think, I'm not sure the league would allow that. Now, exclusive ESPN Plus game, yes, they'll do a London game. They might do two, but... They won't do an exclusive Monday night game. Yeah, uh, Sheeler is, it's more just an expense. That, that's really why there's no Sheeler's in the UFL. Not a whole lot, actually. Um, just, it, it'd be too much of an expense. And plus, like, they're not doing a whole lot of community outreach. Like, it'd be different if there's, like, doing community outreach. Handoff game of one. But a lot of these teams, they're located, they're, they just fly out to the, um, to the city that they're playing. But they're staying in Arlington. What's the same as the skin at Four Field, where the Lions play? Ton of NFL games on digital media, but do you have do I have any physical media like VHS? I do not know. I don't have any games on physical media. Do the Jags beat the Eagles in 2017 if they make the Super Bowl? Yes. And honestly, I don't think it's close. And it's not me being biased. Our bread and butter was beating up on pocket passing QBs. No mobility, pocket passing QBs. Um, that's where we thrived in. And play action, McCarron, quick little out route, gain a five on the play. It is caught by Aitman, Marcel Aitman. Last season, 19 catches, 259 for the Battle Hawks. Brings up third and three. And Nick Foles, he's not mobile in the slightest bit. Nick Foles is not mobile. I think that the Jags destroy him, honestly. Every great game Saxonville had, you look at every great game, it was against guys that were sticks. They were they were statues in the pocket. They were stick figures in the pocket. They had no mobility. Nick Foles fits that bill. I think the Jags blow him out. I really do. But we'll never know. Third and three. McCarron tipped at the line. Incomplete. It's another three and out for the Battle Hawks. This was supposed to be the best offense in the league, but they are struggling. Garrett Marino. Tips the ball at the line. It brings up fourth down. Breland speaks response for the Chiefs losing to the Pats that one year. That was more D4. That was D4 jumping off side. Best player in Jags history. All right, this is tough. If we go, wait, oh, okay, so I have to clarify. Are we going best career with the Jaguars or best player with the Jaguars? Because there's two different things. It's two different things. Um, if we're talking the best player to ever play for the Jaguars, like best Jaguar player, this punts field at the 33-yard line, and it will be brought down to 40. Trey Quinn, the return man. So Michigan ball at the 40 when we get back.
Yeah, usually offense starts off a bit slow to start the season off. Okay, so if we're talking best player, Tony Baselli. Best Jaguar career, Fred Taylor. If that makes sense. Baselli, because he had injuries, didn't play like a super long time. The best Jaguar player is Tony Baselli. The best Jaguar ever is Fred Taylor. So, I think I think Jags fans know what I mean. I think Jags fans know what I mean um, with, with the two. I think Jags fans know what I'm trying to get across. Like, like I'm trying to think of like another franchise that would have a, a guy like that. Best player wear Jags unit, Tory Holt. Um, yeah, you know, he's probably the best ever wear. A little bit silly. No, but Baselli, but holds top three. Holds definitely top three. Top two, I'd even say. I'd say top two. I'd say top two. Like people get people get that, like. Like like I don't know like how many um well it wouldn't really apply for like like I'll give a great example. I'll give a great example. Someone asks you in the post merger era, who's the best packer receiver? Who's the best pack receiver in the post-merger era? I think if you say, okay, in terms of like their, like you give like the Fred Taylor argument, you'd say Donald Driver or Devontae Adams. But if you gave the, who are the, like the, like, like the Maselli argument is Sterling Sharp. Maselli argument is Sterling Sharp. Best player to wear a Jets uni. Ooh. Um, probably Ed Reed. Probably Ed Reed. Favre, yeah, Favre's a good pick. I, Ed Reed's up there, too. Ed Reed, for the half season that he was with the Jets. Curtis Martin's on a bad play. Don Maynard. Um, I would lean Ed Reed, but Favre's a good pick. Favre's a really good pick. I would lean Ed Reed, though. See the grid? I've not checked the grid this morning. I've not checked... Um, I haven't put out a grid video in a while. Just been so busy with stuff with the grid. Most favorite, my favorite NFL player, my most favorite player, by far, Maurice jones drew By far. Ty Law's a good pick. Aaron Rodgers is a good pick. Yeah. Forgot that Rodgers, like, technically played because he played, like, four snaps. <laughs> Hand off this one goes to... Colburn, it's a gain of three. Second and seven to 43. Oh, well, Damian Thompson's a great play. Yeah, Art Monk, people forget that he played for them. I'm not sure he's the best to ever do it, but Thompson's a great play. Pre-game warning for the Brewers Mets game tomorrow? Yeah, I could see it. Best player where Broncos Union? Obviously, Jerry Judy. Obviously. Obviously. Oh, yeah, you can put together an amazing team with players who are one-time Jets. Some players have better peak years, but others physically did more because they were healthier. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, please support UFL football. Nothing else like nothing like football during the offseason. I agree. No, UFL is awesome. I love this. Second seven. Perry. Over the middle. Ball is caught. Is it enough for the first? It's going to be about an inch shy. Third and one. Catch there made by the tight end Gunner Oaks. If I had to make an all time team, would Kelsey be the center? Um, he'd be in consideration, but no, my center would be Jim Otto. I would go Jim Otto. Greatest win Jags history? Oh, easily the divisional one against Denver. Easily. Not even close. Easily. Yeah, you can put together an amazing team with players who are one-time Jets. Easily. Easily. I mean, you're going Art Monk and, and um, Art Monk, Dom Aaron at receiver, LaDainian Tomlinson, Curtis Martin at running back. Favre, Rogers is your QB. I mean, that'd be <laughs> crazy. Handoff, first down goes to Colburn. Are the Jets basically the retirement home of the NFL? Um, it seems that way based on what they're doing this year. <laughs> seems that way, but... I like the Reddick trade for them. Would there be an Eagles player in the all-time team? Reggie White, yes. Reggie White would be in the all-time team. If you're doing an all-time team of, of NFL players, easily Reggie White. Easily, he would be in there. Yeah, I don't know why Cleveland would extend him. I thought, like, you know what? The trade was good for Cleveland because he gave up nothing. He's not costing anything this year. Perry looking, fires, caught at the 30, 25, stays on his feet to the 20, 15, 10, down to the 7-yard line, catch there made by Devin Ross, gain of 40 on a first down. Ooh, 
What a play there. AJ Perrin and Devin Ross. And Ross stays on his feet. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling for a gain of 40. All day to throw and Perry fires. And a skew Henry tries to put his hands up to stop it, but can't bat it down the line. Instead, turns into a gain of 40. All right, here we go. First and goal. Three wide, one on the far side, two on the near side. Perry keeps himself. Fires. Throw. Tipped and intercepted. Battle hook stay alive. And it, I don't know why they took it out, but it's going to be down at the six yard line. Battle hook ball. Went off of someone's hands and it got intercepted by Quinero Cole. Cole with the interception there for St. Louis. See this again. This went off. Of Askew Henry and picked off by Cole. Askew Henry with the assist there. And the Battle Hawks take over at the 6. Still no score in this one. Uh, when evaluating the mentioned the fact that earlier players blocked with hunch elbow should be a factor. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Yeah, user pick. Yeah. <laughs> Try to score challenge pretty much, yeah. Ready for some warming up the pen? Yeah, I, I get why. I mean, it's at 33 pitches already. Yeah, Freed's already at 33. The bases are loaded. And this could get very ugly very fast. Especially, you don't want guys going more than 80 pitches the first week of the season. They're not fully extended yet. So 33 pitches. That's that's already a lot. Castellanos is up. All right. Did anything tragic happen? Okay, one, two count. Did, any, did anything awful happen today? Did anything awful, like, did anyone have to apologize for anything? Anyone get canceled? Any, anything happen today? Because um, the bases are low and Castellanos is up, so. Um, Who be the QB of that all-time team? Can't be Brady. Um, in that case, maybe Unitas. One and two in the dirt. Oh, yeah, so what I was saying with, with Judy, I thought it was a good trade for Cleveland because I'm like, you know what? You're not giving up anything. You get a compensatory pick the year after if you let him go, if it doesn't work out. And if it does work out, you have your receiver to line up alongside Mari Cooper. You need some receiver depth because they don't really have anyone besides Cooper. And then they threw that window by extending him. Like, what, what are you doing? That, that wasn't the point. That was not why you should have made the trade. No, that, that, that defeated the whole purpose of, of making the trade. Yeah, Freed's already going to be at 37 pitches. Should Trevor Bauer get another MLB shot? No. No. No, he should not. Legit idea. A group of YouTube football personalities like yourself could draft all-time teams that fans vote on drafted on who drafted the best. Ooh, that'd be interesting. Almost like like we do like like weekly drafts of, of various things, like with various criteria. That'd be interesting. Oh my god, they called that a ball. What? If you're watching the Braves Phillies game, that was right down the middle, and the um called it a ball. Oh my god, that is one of the worst missed calls. I've seen a home plate ump. That should have been strike three. That should have been strike three. That was terrible. Oh my god. Alright, first down for the Battle Hawks. 751 left. Still no score. Ball at the five. In the flat ball is caught by the tight end down to the 18 yard line. Gain a 13 yard streak. Sutherland. All right, first down at the 18. Gain of 12. Just to tweet that out. That was horrible. Holy cow. Hand off down to the 20. Gain of 2. That one, Jacob Sailors. In the, the Battle Hawks depth chart at running back, it's Goldman as the 1. Jacob Sailors is the 2. And Mateo Durant as your 3. Yeah, if you saw the Braves Phillies, if you saw what just happened, you, you know exactly what was happening. That was horrible. In the NBA, would Nashville be in the East? You put Nashville with Memphis. No, I think you put Nashville with Memphis. I wouldn't make any sense that two teams in Tennessee have them in different divisions. 
Or different conferences, I mean. Second aim ball to 20. Empty backfield. Two on the far side, three on the near side. It's a quick little screen pass. Ball is caught at the 25-yard line. Brings up third and three. Catch there made on the play by Sailors. So Sailors getting involved on this drive. Playing Madden right now in the Falcons franchise mode, averaging seven points a game through eight games. All right, we got we got a 77 Falcons player. That's basically the 77 Falcons right there. No offense. All right, third and three. Four wide, two on the other side, two on the far side. They send three. McCarron looking over the middle of the field. Ball is caught. They got a nice drive going. Gain a six, first down. At the 31-yard line, Darius Shepard on the on the grab. Okay, so your all-time team, QB Rodgers, assuming you can't do Brady. Wide receiver, Moss and Rice. All right, I can live with that. Running back, Chris Johnson. Oh, I know. No, no, no. I don't agree with that at all. No, there's like 20 backs. I choose over Johnson easily, just off the top of my head. I'm going all-time team. I'm going running back. Walter Payton would be above him. Eric Dickerson, Barry Sanders. Yale Sayers would be above Chris Johnson easily. Um... Adrian Peterson with Damian Tomlinson. There's a lot of guys that pick up above Chris Johnson. Catch made by Akeem Butler. There he is. The best receiver in the UFL. Makes the grab. Gain a 13. You know, I love Akeem Butler. I don't know why he didn't get a look in the NFL this year. Like, there were certain guys from, like, what on earth? Why didn't he get a look? Um, I'm really disappointed with St. Louis because they got Jacor Pearson, and then he got hurt. And I thought, you know, you get Pearson and Butler. That is a legitimately good receiving combo. That's a legitimately good receiving combo. If Stott walks, um, needs to get freed out. I mean, they just allowed two runs. So Phillies are up 3-2. He's got 43 pitches. He's, he's going to be done. Oh, Jim Brown. Oh, you mean Jim Brown. Okay, yeah, I can live with that. I can live with that then. You know, yeah, Jim Brown, absolutely. You know, CJ2K would not be on an all-time team. All-time team of great, like, guys of 40s, yeah. But <laughs> it would pass second and 10. How the Brahmas finish this year? Um, yeah, the, I'm still I'm not so on destroying as a kicker, destroying as a kicker. Quarterback situation's a bit iffy. I'm not. Um, they're definitely the weakest of the four teams in the XFL division on paper. Second and ten. Crawl route caught. Did he get both feet in? It looks like he did. That is a first down. Marcel Eatman. On the grab. Into plus territory. Nice drive here to start at the five yard line after the interception. Still no score. In an all time draft, would it be best to wait a few rounds on QBs? Um, and then get a guy like Roger Sublick. Well, Sublick would go pretty early on. Sublick would go pretty early on. And Marlins are not doing well. Yeah. Screen pass, caught, tries to bull his way forward, and he does, down to the 36-yard line. Gain of eight on the play, Blake Jackson. Second and two. Oh, yeah, you're not going to be, you're going to be in disbelief at how bad that call was. If you didn't see the call, you're going to be in disbelief at how bad that call was. It was the worst missed strike three I've seen in, in ages. It should be 2-0 Braves going into the second. It says 3-2 and Freed's out of the game. Egregiously bad. Yeah, we need computerized strike zone. Well, the game can't end nothing, nothing. There, there's overtime and the games can't end in ties in the in the UFL. Second one, play action. McCarron has time. Now he's looking, holding on the play in all likelihood. So it's a gain of one, will be a first down, but um, probably coming back for holding. Back him up another 10 yards. Yeah, it's early on the season, but still, you never want to start 0-3, obviously. Rather start 3-0 than 0-3. Yeah, Vikings getting John Parker Romo. I, li I like it a lot. I know he didn't, like, have the greatest of camps with the Lions last year, but I th he was the best kicker in the in the XFL last season. I love that guy. I I really thought he was going to beat out Riley Patterson. The other, the other thing with kickers... The name to look out for, if you need a veteran kicker, I'm telling you, Taylor Russolino. Remember the name. Renegades kicker. It was perfect today. Taylor Russolino. 
Honestly, if I'm Jacksonville, I, I would I would honestly bring him in. I like him over Joey Sly. I like him over Riley Patterson. Bring him in. Second level, they hand the ball off, and he's got the first down. It's Wayne Gallman, the former Clemson man, the former Giant. With a giant run there down to the 33-yard line on first down. Could take us to the two-minute warning. Worse than a strikethrough call in the Rangers game versus Tampa that end of the game. Well, this was well, this was a missed ball. For, well, that was a missed. Um, well, that that was a horrible call. But that was that was a called strike three out of the zone. This was a called ball that should have been strike three. Yeah, raise more vulnerable relocate. Yeah, because they need a stadium and they need a a stadium at a better location. That's why I don't agree with with building a stadium in St. Petersburg. Like it doesn't fix the problem. Yeah, the drop's a dump, but people will show up to a dump if your team is winning. Look, no one agreed that the Oakland Coliseum was a great stadium, but as we get the two-minute warning, nothing, nothing. But people showed up. Pe the A's sold out games when they were winning. The Rays didn't sell a playoff game. And yeah, I mean, the drops a dump, but that's not the reason you don't sell a playoff game. Fans would watch games on wooden bleachers if it meant their team was in the playoffs. Yeah, finally, the, the Battle Hawks able to sustain some sort of drive. Finally. Finally get into some run. Finally get Akeem Butler going. Shepard's getting going. Finally. You need to see the call I was talking about. Oh, man. Hang on. Let's see if I can... Can I pull it up? Hang on. Let's see if I can pull it up. Oh, wait. So, someone did it. Yes. Someone did it. Some, um, Mark Bowen did it. Yeah. Okay. If you haven't seen this call, here, here it is on Twitter. Prepare yourself for the worst missed strike three you'll see. This should have been end of the inning. End of the inning. Braves up 2 nothing. Going to the top of the second. Instead, ends up walking the guy. Freed is now pulled from the game and the Phillies are leading. If you have not seen this call, this just happened like 10 minutes ago, and I, I, I called it in real time. This is egregious. Like, this is the kind of stuff that, if you were basically, you can't even say, like, like computerized umps, like, we need computerized umps. If this is what we're going to get, oh my god. Terrible. Terrible call. All right, I'm going to turn off the Iowa game because they're up by 18. I don't think they're losing this one. I'll throw on the Elite game that's about to happen in. Yeah, that it was literally right down the middle. Like, there's no ambiguity. It was literally right down the middle. Right down the middle of the pipe. I don't know how it was missed. It was one of the worst missed calls I've seen. You know, I want the Braves to have the best record. I want the D-backs, obviously. But all right, yeah, that was a horrible call. <laughs> that should be challenged. Yeah, you should be allowed to challenge it. All right, so three-two in that game, higher scoring than this game <laughs> so far. No points. Will any team reach what the D-backs did in the third inning on opening day? Let me know down below. Get any donations to answer your question right away. Otherwise, I'm just going anywhere to see him. First down at the 33 yard line. Battle Hawks, their best drive of the day. McCarron, 3 wide, one on the far side, two on the near side. The give up the middle goes to Goldman. Goldman, nothing doing there. Again, everything now, clock stops. I didn't play past this now inside two minutes. So, second and 10. And right now, we have about 90 people in the stream. Thank you so much. Pretty similar to what we had for the first game. Again, hopefully you guys like the setup. Went all out for this one. Um, took a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money. But thank you guys so much for, for all the support. You guys helped me if this possible. So thank you so much. Um, what games do I have on except for this? I've got the pregame show for March Madness. i got Braves Phillies. I've got the White Sox Tigers in extra innings. And then obviously I've got the UFL on the big screen. Second and nine. McCarron fires. Sideline throw. Curl route caught. Gain of eight on the play. Aitman will be short of the first down. You wonder if you're Michigan, do you consider taking a timeout? It's obviously a clock sign issue for St. Louis. But if you're Michigan, you want a chance to get the ball back. Should flopping be penalized? Yes. Absolutely. Third down. Pitch to Goldman. Nice block there. Goldman down to the 22-yard line. First down. We're going to stop the clock while they move the chains. Maybe the Battle Hawks take a timeout here. It's a beautiful block. 
Goldman looked like he was getting stuffed for a brief moment. A nice pull there. Makes one man miss and then finishing him off. Look for a second like Brillin Speaks had him. Battlehook's not taking a timeout yet. This is interesting clock management. Taking a lot of time. 30 seconds. McCarron fires. End zone shot. Eight men the target incomplete. Intended target again. Eight men in the coverage or on the coverage. Keith Gibson Jr. Takes it down to 27 seconds. Battlehawks with all three timeouts. Uh, NCAA uh, men's or women's for pregame? Uh, men's. The women are playing right now, but I opened up TV screens and I was up by 18. So I figure there's no reason to keep it on unless they make a giant comeback. In which case I'll, I'll flip, but just want to make sure I have that game on just in case. Alright, second and 10. 4Y, 3 on the far side, 1 on the near side. McCarron in the gun. Panthers send four. It's a quick pass. It's caught, but stays inbounds. Nothing do it. No gain on the play. Caught by Jamarcus Bradley. I figure the Battlehawks will take a timeout with 18 seconds left. So it brings up third and 10, maybe third and 11. Either way, nothing doing there. Battlehawks take their first timeout. They have two left. Again, thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. We're doing both games tomorrow. As you can see on that ticker on the bottom line, you can see the schedule of games. We got both games taking place tomorrow. I think the Braves are about to tie this up. They have second and third. Nobody out. Meanwhile, 7-6 from the Tigers-White Sox game. Two out. Sox have a runner on second. Down by one. What Final Four game am I going to? Um, I don't know. Um, but how, how it works is that you get tickets for both games. So when you buy a ticket, it's for both games. I'm going to buy the all three session package. So I'm going to buy for the Saturday game and the Sunday game. I'm wait or Saturday game and the Monday game. I'm waiting to see what ticket price is going to be like. Um, they dropped a lot. They dropped by a hundred bucks when UNC and Arizona went out. Wait to see what happens with Duke. If Duke goes out, then they're, um, then they're going to plummet even more. Third one, they're calling a draw play with Goldman. Guess they don't want to have a holding or like, or just avoid the sack. Michigan should call a timeout here and they will with ninth, with uh, 15 seconds left. Michigan calls their first timeout. Brings a fourth and six. Wait, the, the Battlehawks call what? Wait, okay, now wait, now I'm confused. Okay. Wait, timeout. Timeout. The Battlehawks called timeout. Wait, what what is What is happening? Okay. The Battlehawks call timeout. And then another 15 seconds came off the clock. So I, I don't know what the time is. I don't know if the time's right. I, I, I don't know what something happened with the scoreboard. Okay, that's more like it. They, So they call him out with three seconds. Okay, that makes more sense. I don't know why Michigan didn't call him out with 15. Get a chance to maybe get a kickoff return? I don't know why they didn't call him out. That was bizarre. That was, um... That was some weird score bug error there. For the first points of the game. And there's no pronunciation guide. I'm assuming it's Smizit. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, please let me know. There's no pronunciation guide. Um, so here we go. Kick is up by Smith. It is right down the middle. 3-0. The Battlehawks strike first in this game. But hang on. There might have been an icing. And there is an icing. Meanwhile, Tigers win 7-6 over the Sox. Michigan iced him. Again, I don't know why Michigan didn't call timeout 15 seconds left. You figure at least give yourself a chance to maybe get a kickoff return. I don't know why they want to call timeout. Okay, but to be fair, FC Cincinnati also, like, if they have the best record, I mean, to be fair, they deserve it because they had the wooden spoon for so many years. Those fans have been through a lot. They deserve some success. All right, let's turn on the Marlins game. 3 nothing Pirates in that one. Let's turn that on. All right. Fourth and six are going to redo the kick again. Ice the kicker. Smith it. Second time is a lot closer than the first time, but it is still good. It is still good. Definitely more dicey than last time, but 3 nothing. Battle Hawks out in front. 12 minute halftime. And let me adjust my TV to get the Marlins game on. One of the screens. So low scoring half. 
Which I'm not sure a lot of people saw coming necessarily. Not this low scoring, at least with the Battle Hawks, how great their offense was last season. I'm going to put in a poll. Who do you think wins this game? Do you think it's going to be the Battle Hawks or do you think it's going to be Panthers? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And in that poll, was Wooden Spoon mean the worst record in the league? Wooden Spoon means the worst record in MLS. Oh, wait. I'm an idiot. Who wins this game? Yes or no? Wow. That's, 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 a, that's, that's a good job there. Good job. Let, let's try this again. Who wins this game? And let's put in some team names this time. Let's put in some team names. Yeah, I mean, minor leagues, they, they have the, the challenge system for, for the strike zone. Like, I have no problem with that. They should do that. Because that call was egregious. That call was absolutely egregious. All right. It looked like a, a Raiders-Vikings game. That was insane, too, because, like, that was a 3 nothing game that took place in a dome. Like, like usually when you see, like, a 3 nothing game in the NFL and today, it's like, okay, the weather has to be terrible. No, this one took place in a dome. All right, so 3 nothing game. Again, any donations to get your question right away. We're doing all the games. We're doing both games that take place on Sunday, both games taking place on ESPN. And we're doing every game next week except for the Saturday night game. But, again, how it works with Final Four is that you can buy either a Saturday package, a Monday package, or a package for both. So Saturday gets you game access to both Final Four games. Sunday gets you, or Monday gets you access to just the championship. And then if you buy the package for all three. Like right now, the cheapest on SeatGeek at least for one is six sixty five, which is honestly not terrible for three games. For a Final Four, it's not terrible. It was over like seven. 50 when Arizona and UNC were in. If Duke goes out, that's going to go down a lot. If Duke goes down, it's going to go down a lot. Should Mike Tomlin be fired? No. No, I, I don't think Mike Tomlin should be fired. I think he needs to adjust the system, but as of now, no. He should not be fired. I miss, I mean, XFL, like, like I don't really miss the XFL because, like, we have the XFL right now. AF, the quality was not good. Let's... Like, I miss the Apollos, but I, I will I will not lie. The quality of AAF football was garbage. Offensively, the quality was garbage. And then you had games on, um, you had Jake Berg with 3-2, runner on first two outs, yeah. Um, and then you had games that were streaming on Bleacher Report Live. Like, like the AAF was, was, was a disaster. Like, you had games on, like, you literally had games airing on Bleacher Report Live. Like, you won't be furious about something. Um, like, at least Peacock, you can, like, access through, like, a smart TV, like, smart TV or something. Like, I, I don't know who it's Bleacher Report Live. I don't think you can access that on smart TV or anything like that. I, I don't think you can download Bleacher Report Live on, like, your TV. College Classroom, you just had tickets to the fleet. Oh, and season tickets to the fleet. Nice. I do, I do miss San Diego having a team. They support the fleet very well. Never seen my favorite baseball team play a home playoff game graduating high school this year. That's horrible. Yeah, that's that's rough. This feels like an AF game. I mean, to some extent. Congrats to who? Oh, yeah. Congrats to who for winning the second UFL game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, I mean, who probably has scored more points in the Battle Hawks or the Panthers? But if you do want to support the Battle Hawks or the Panthers, you can use those emojis if you are a member. Thank you so much for being a member. You get a lot of cool perks, including your name at the end of each video. Members only Q&A streams once a month. And we have a lot of other perks, um, depending on what tier you're in. But you get to use emojis during the chat. You get the green text next to your name. It's been fun. Honestly, it's been a lot of fun. I, I miss live streaming games. I like Obviously, I love streaming with you guys, but there's something about live streaming actual games that I miss so, so much. And it's like, we're back. We are back. It's been two months, two months too long since the NFC Championship with the Niners and the Lions, but we're back. It feels like we never left. Feels like we never left. Yep, Tigers one seven six. Yep, Tigers one seven six. Yeah, Phillies have some more brother, but they have to. It's five three. You got a runner on third. He's already at forty pitches. So tomorrow we got the Defenders against the Brahmas, those two teams. I wish I had a DC Defenders, like, modern helmet. That's the 2020 helmet. That's at noon. I'll be live streaming that game. And then we got Memphis against Houston. So we got these four teams. 
tomorrow. Remember, earlier today, we had the Birmingham Stallions taking on the Arlington Renegades opening day of the season, opening game, and the Stallions ended up taking it 27-14 with some nice second-half offense. They were down 11-3. Nice touchdown throw by Matt Corral toward the end of the half with three seconds left. Gave them some momentum, and then they just played phenomenal the second half. As a reminder, if you want to bet on the UFL, use my promo code at PRIZEPIX. Gator 9, 100% deposit match up to 100 bucks. Yeah, Braves are still winning 5 3. You can see on the ticker, you can see all the things, the championship odds, the money lines, you can see the over unders for players. West Hill's over under 45 and a half rushing yards. He's probably going to smash that. Um, no one gets out of the inning, 5 3. But in terms of the championship odds, according to Vegas, St. Louis is the favorite at plus 300 alongside Birmingham. D.C. at plus 380. So basically, not that I'm one to give gambling advice, but if you think that D.C., if you think that St. Louis or Birmingham will win the title, if you think that, place a bet on both of them and you will come out on top. Because they have the same odds. And it's plus 300. So if you just do some math, you place 100 on St. Louis, 100 on Birmingham. If one of them wins... You put in 200, but you win 300. So, Braves are still winning, yes. 5-3. Phillies got out of the inning, though. Phillies got out of the inning. So, they are still winning. I like the NFL kickoff rules. I like them. Um, just because there's actual kickoffs now. There's actual kickoffs. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to, honestly... I wouldn't be opposed to, like, the USFL, where you're kicking off... Or, UFL, we're kicking off for the 20, but... I don't know. I, I I think these new rules will increase kickoffs while not making field position crazy, while at the same time um, making the kickoff more exciting because right now we're just a boring play. It was an automatic play. 22% of all kickoffs got returned. That's way too low. No kickoffs to the Super Bowl got returned. That's embarrassing. You saw a UFL game. I did too. I saw um, New York Sentinels. It was a New York Sentinels game. Quinn Gray, the former Jaguar quarterback. He was the starting quarterback for that game. I do have UFL helmets. I do have UFL. They're not in my, my place, but I figured there was no need to, to have them here. But um, you can buy UFL helmets. If this game stays 3 0, I'll bet $500 million. I don't have that JG9 pays more attention to Braves Phillies. No, I mean, I'm, I'm paying attention to this. I'm paying attention to this. Best record in the NFL next season? Panthers. Um, no. Best record in the NFL next season? Um. I would probably just, based on history, I'd probably say San Fran. I'd probably say San Fran. UFL team in Chicago? No, that'd be the worst place to add a team. Because weather wouldn't be great, so I'm not sure you're going to get fans necessarily to come out. On top of that, you're either playing at Soldier Field, which would look terrible on TV, or, especially with, with during soccer season, because you have the soccer lines with Chicago Fire, or you're playing in the suburbs in Ridgeview, which would be terrible because it's so hard to get there. Um, and the, you'd be playing like 10th fiddle in, in your city. Like you have, there's so many other teams and so many other focuses. No one would go to the UFL games when you have two baseball teams there, a basketball team, a hockey team, a soccer team. No one would go to those games. It was California Redwoods. All right, so if it was California Redwoods, it was either the Sentinels, I would play the Tuskers or the Locomotives. It was one of those three. It was one of those three. So I got a 33% chance of guessing right. I'm guessing it was the Tuskers. I'm guessing... I think Pittman was on the Tuskers, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check. Was it the Tuskers? He was on the... He was on the Tuskers! How on earth did I get that right? Holy cow, he was on the Tuskers. Yeah, Florida Tuskers. So it was the Tuskers. And that game, I mean, the Redwoods played at like a bunch of different stadiums. I think they played mainly at, at AT&T. But they played at a few stadiums, if I'm not mistaken. Played all across the state. No, you, you can't do SeatGeek Stadium. You can't do it. Um, the, the reason why is because look at what happened in 2020. They played at SeatGeek. The XFL played at SeatGeek in 2020 with the, with the Los Angeles Wildcats. This team right here. And they didn't bring them back. They did not bring the Wildcats back. They got such poor attendance, such poor support. The Wildcats were basically... I think Josh Johnson played for that team, too. You know, I remember the old UFL from the 2010s. Oh, yeah. No, I, I went to a game in 2009. And the games were on Versus. I remember the Omaha Nighthawks with Jeff Garcia at quarterback. 
Dante Culpepper with oh that's a bad error by the, by the Marlins shortstop. Um, Dante Culpepper with second round battle lines like they got talent on that. They got talent in that league. They had talent that second year. But just bad, bad management. And then Virginia Beach was a was a decent team with good fan support. Virginia Beach would be a nice location for UFL. Virginia Beach would be a very good location for UFL. It's geographically sound. Like, it's centralized. Honestly, if I were the UFL, I would go into Omaha. I would go Omaha. Because they support the Nighthawks like crazy. And there's no pro sports teams there. I would go Omaha. If I'm the UFL and I'm expanding, my next location is Omaha. Does the UFL just play in NFL Sims? Um, no. So St. Louis, obviously, the Dome, there's not a... Um, so let's see, Michigan plays at Ford Field. Um, obviously, that's an NFL stadium. Birmingham plays... Obviously, they don't have a team. Memphis doesn't have a team. Houston... The, no, they're playing at Rice Stadium. Houston plays where Rice plays. Um... You have the Battle Hawks playing at the Dome, which doesn't have a team. DC is playing at, um, and that ball is, ooh, Sanchez, rough inning, rough outing for him right now. Um, DC plays at Audi Field where DC United plays. You have Arlington playing at where the Rangers used to play, uh, Chocotel Stadium. And they have the Brahmas playing at the Almodovar. So really, Michigan's the only team that plays at NFL Stadium. The only team that plays at NFL Stadium. Should UFL hire retired NFL players for name value? No, no, that that would not be good. Um, they tried it with the coaches; it didn't work. Heinz Ward, they tried like like getting like Heinz Ward as a coach; it didn't work out. I think retired player like, I mean, if you can get like good retired players to play, like that's one thing, but it's a bit different. Oh, play the plate? No, that's a bad throw. Man, the Marlins have not fielded well this sitting. Error by the shortstop, bad throw. Another run's gonna come in. Oh my goodness. It's two errors on the Marlins in this inning. Oh my god. It should be out of the inning right now. Should be out of the inning. Instead, one out, driving two runs. Any sliver of a chance you have a push it to kick off back at Super Bowl 60 and 61 back about an hour to ensure a dark halftime show since both are in California? Good question. I don't think they will. They they didn't do it for Super Bowl 50. They didn't do it for Super Bowl 56. They won't do it. Now, they've been gradually pushing the start time back. Like, it used to start, like, when I was growing up, it used to start at 6.20. And now it starts at 6.40. So, they're gradually pushing it back, but I don't see them doing it for a halftime show. It's about TV ratings more than dark halftime show. Yeah, soundtrack would be a great spot for UFL. If they ever go out west, again, because it'd be tough to go out west just because, like, geographically, it's it'd be a far trip. But definitely, you gotta go San Diego. That'd be a great location. All right, third quarter. Let's do this. Orlando would be great for UFL. It depends. They didn't really support the Guardians well at all, but at the same time, they support the Apollo as well. If you played on UCF Stadium, but I'm not sure UCF would allow that again after what happened with the Apollo is when they couldn't pay the rent. And like they had to practice in Georgia because they couldn't pay the, they couldn't afford the rent in Orlando. Like I'm not sure. Will I stream baseball games? We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, Woodson was the coach of the Vipers. Woodson was the coach of the Vipers. And he was terrible. Rob Woodson was the coach of the Vipers. Um, Terrell Buckley was a coach of the Guardians. He was awful. Heinz Ward was coach of the Brahmas. He was awful. You know, I expected way more from, from St. Louis this game. I expected way more from St. Louis this game. Offensively, at least. You figured this was going to be the, the most explosive offense in the UFL. Without a doubt, you figured. They got McCarron coming back. You got Akeem Butler, the best receiver out there. You got some talent on this team. You figure that, that this is going to be an explosive offense, but it's not turned out that way so far, at least. Kickoff to the 25, to the 32, 33-yard line brought down by Ross. Returned there by Darius Shepard. So, Alex Ball, first and 10. 68 votes in, and 72% he run with the Battle Hooks to win this one. We're going to see the stats. That's a good question. Um, I'll give you the website to the stats. Um, I don't go to the Game Center a lot just because um, it's a bit ahead of me. But if you do want to see that. Most disappointing NFL team besides the obvious. Like from last season. 
I don't know who the obvious one. Like, Jaguars, Eagles, Dolphins. They're all, like, pick your poison in terms of collapses. First and 10 ball at the 32. The give goes to Gallman. Gallman down to the 34-yard line. Gain of two. Second and eight. Good to see spring football finally work out. All was a pro wrestler. I mean, to be fair, the USFL was good for two seasons. Um, I mean, to find how successful it was because they didn't play at home stadiums. But, yeah. You retire Major League players as a concept of the big three? Yeah, I don't think it would work really for the UFL. Because also, it's tough because, like, big three, you can convince guys, okay, you just have to play basketball for, like, 20 minutes. Because the games are short. They go to 50. This is okay. You got to practice a ton and travel all across the country. I mean, they're doing that in the big three anyway, but it's a bit different. McCarron sacked at the 28-yard line. Loss of six. Flag on the play, though. As it stands, it's a loss of six. Brings up third and 14, but we'll see what this flag is. Also, football, obviously, way higher risk of injury than basketball. So it's a lot easier to convince guys like that. Offside, so negate the sack, second and three. Why do I feel like the Dodgers are World Series contenders, but suddenly lose them the divisional round again? I mean, that's the Dodger way. That's the Dodger way. All right, hang on. Jeremy Fowler reporting the Cowboys and Zeke Elliott have interest in a possible reunion. So, um, Zeke could be coming back to the Cowboys. That reported by Jeremy Fowler. I do a video on that at some point. Do a lot of videos today on JJ News. Goldman stuffed. Lost a two on the play. Brought down there by Rondell Carter. I should also note this Michigan defensive unit. Haven't called his name a lot today. But maybe the best linebacker in the USFL last season. For my money, the best linebacker in the USFL last season was on Michigan. Frank Inda. We haven't called his name a lot today. But Michigan's defense playing very well against this formidable offense on paper. Four wide, two on the near side, two on the far side. McCarron takes a step. They send only three. McCarron fires plenty of time. I'm not sure why you only send three there. They drop everyone back and just find the soft spot in the zone. McCarron all day to, to work. And Darius Shepard on the grab. Gain of eight. 47-yard line. First down. If the government makes daylight savings permanent, every Super Bowl west of Miami will have halftime shows in the daylight. Yes. Um, well, not... Wait, not necessarily. I mean... Because Arizona is... Arizona shows take place at night when they do it, and they have, um, like, it's, like, right as the sun's going down. Like, Katy Perry was at night. Ink would pass on the out road, second and ten. And we don't do anything different with our clocks, so. Britt with the 20! Thank you so much! Thank you so, so much, Britt. Um... If there's any comment you want to make, let me know, and I'll, I'll read it on the air. Oh, Bunny. Easter Bunny. There you go. Sack on the play down the 40-yard line. Down at the 40-yard line. Britt with a 20. Thank you so, so much. Really appreciate it. Daniel, what, or, no, that's 90, that's 96. TJ Carter on the stop. So let me put your name in there, and then we'll go from there. Man, this St. Louis offensive line is going to be getting manhandled today outside that one drive. Third and 15 balls at the 42-yard line. Why the Falcons go with him more to overlook? <laughs> Third and 15. McCarron fires incomplete. Would have been close to four-down territory if it was a catch. I think they're discussing it. And it looks like he completed at the start, but it's Akeem Butler, so you never know. It's Akeem Butler, so you never know. He's made some crazy catches before. I have a joke with Miami Marlins. Just kidding, I'm not making that joke. Their defense was, was shambolic there. So they are calling it a catch. It's a gain of 10. Like, so Akeem Butler does make the grab, but it'll bring out the punting unit. Yeah, that was a quick halftime. Very, very quick halftime. 
When we have stuff to talk about in the chat, it makes it go by a lot faster. And Michigan will call a timeout. That's their first. But another good defensive stand. Wes Hill receiving yards. Yeah, I, I can check that. I mean, I... um. I don't think you can bet on his receiving yards. You can bet on his rushing yards. I, I don't know if there was anywhere that you can bet like his yards from scrimmage or receiving yards and whatnot. Um, but let me check what his receiving yards are. I'm not sure he's done anything in the receiving game. You know, one catch, negative one yards. So that yeah, he, he caught a pass before we got on stream because we were doing the other game. But yeah. Yeah, receiving yards is... Um, yeah, you can't... I don't even think you can bet on that. That's a muff punt! Muff punt, but Michigan is able to fall on it. Special teams has been an issue for Michigan today. There was one punt that should have been fair caught the 18-yard line. And instead, it goes all the way down to the two. Because the guy ran into his own guy. And that time, Quinn, straight Quinn, muffs the punt. Able to fall on it. Michigan ball right around the five-yard line. Yeah, a lot of ugly football. A lot of ugly football right now. But it's early on. It's early on. It's Vikings rares all over again. <laughs> Who would have thought with the battle locks? Who would have thought? Yeah, permanent daylight savings when kids have to go to school in the dark and late fall and winter. Yeah, I... Look, here, here's, here's, here's my thing. I just, I want to keep it on one time zone, but... I, I won't lie, it stunk in New York going to school and you go to school at, you get there at like 6.40 in the morning and it's dark and then you have after school stuff and then you leave at like 3.30 and it's dark. It stinks. It really takes a toll on you. It messes up your psyche. It's it's really bad, like especially during football season. Like it, it stunk. Like you think Sunday scaries are bad? They are even worse when you're in New York when it's December and you watch a Jaguars game and by the time the game is over, it's dark outside. UFL, let's go new season. There you go. Who, who are you uh, Who are you rooting for? Who are you pulling for in the, in the UFL this season? Who are you pulling for? Hopefully, if you're a Renegades fan, my condolences of your sounds. Congratulations. And if you're a fan of the other four teams that are playing tomorrow, I will see you tomorrow on stream. Uh, we're doing all the games there. You want some ugly baseball? Probably worse. At least you're not a Rockies fan. At least you're not a Rockies fan. It's the one solace I've got. 90 people in the stream right now. It's so to Luke Schleister. Luke Schleister. There we go. There we go. Luke Schleister. Yeah, Luis is bad at here right now. I mean, to be fair, it's early on. I mean, look, Corbin Carroll's playing terribly right now. He's sitting, what, 150 or something like that? His first two games? It's early. It's early. Well, that, that, that's that's the beauty of baseball is that like because it's so early on we don't really have a huge sample size people like react to a lot of stuff but if this was happening in game like 74 of the season no one's talking about it yeah why is Noah still in 7-3 runners on the corners he's at 64 pitches why is he still in the game Rockies might be worse than the A's which is saying something yeah I, I don't know who's going to be worse I don't know I will, I will say this with the with the Rockies. I want to see what happens tonight and then tomorrow, obviously. Um, no gain on the play with Hills. Second and 10 to 7. Because it's always tough hitting against Gallon and Kelly. It's always tough. I want to see what happens tonight. I want to see what happens tonight. Because Fott, I mean, I like Brandon Fott a lot, but you never know. I would say like Ryan Nelson, Tommy Henry, like they, they're, they're hit or miss. Second 10, and Ryan Nelson's a lot more miss than hit. Out route caught at the 12-yard line, although he did play well in the World Series. Devin Gray with a touch of gray on that one, third and five. Fact of fiction, Bud Black, it's fire midseason. You think the Rockies want to pay the buyout? No, no, fiction.
No, they're they're riding with Blood Black the whole season. They would have fired him last year if they if they wanted to with a hundred losses. Third and five. Perry has to avoid the blind side. Hit caught on the drag route. First down at the 23 yard line. What a play to get rid of that ball. Gain of 11 on that one. Looked for a second like he was going to lose that ball in a strip sack. Yet to have it just in the nick of time. And it's caught by Trey Quinn for first down. First 10 balls at the 23-yard line. Play action. Perry looking. Fires fly route. Caught! Michigan with one of their best drives of the day. From their own 5-yard line, they're now in plus territory. It's Marcus Sims. It's 9-on-9. Nine nine. Working on Peyton Jones, and he wins that one. Marcus Sims down to the St. Louis 47-yard line. Gain of about 30 yards. And the Panthers are in business right now. And I made an error on the uh, on the timeouts. It's actually Michigan with two. My apologies. Panthers on the move. Super low score, but that might change in just a bit because the Panthers have their best drive of the day so far. Or one of them at the very least. They got down to the red zone once before got intercepted. Perry. Gain of two. Right, it is true. It's not Black's fault the team is void of talent, but some of the managerial decisions made no sense. Like, um, the other night, the other night, um, the other night, Freed, like, um, Freeland, was it Freeland the other? I forget who it was, but, like, it took, like, five straight batters before a mound visit the other night. Eganair with a tour, thank you so, so much. Who are the only two teams never to have a 100 loss season? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, if I had to guess, if I had to guess on that one. So we have second eight, Perry, over the middle of the field, slant route, caught. Room to run, 30, 25, 20, breaks the tackle, still going, 15, 10, 5, down at the four-yard line. Cole Igotene on the grab. It's another huge gain. Second play of the drive over 30 plus yards. This one goes for 43. All right, I'm guessing the only two teams that never had two are, are the Yankees and the Cardinals, I would guess. First and goal of the four. Best field position. First and goal of the four. Yeah, I don't think the Yankees have had a, a, a hundred loss season. There's a timeout on the field. It's Michigan. Another timeout burned, so that they only have one left now. Oh, made it two second fit in. Oh, okay. I've never seen that before, then. Because usually there is an option to donate one dollar, but I don't think you can chat anything with a dollar. But thank you so much, anyways. Thank you so much. Worst Yankee team of all time? Ooh, that's that's tough. I don't know, like the worst one of all time. Real Little just hit a home run, seven four now. Philly's slowly cutting the deficit. I mean, before where they were like the Highlanders, they probably had to be like one of the worst teams. All right, first single, ball the four. The give. This one goes to Matthew Colburn. Colburn, nothing doing. Again, last time they were in the red zone. Turnover. Williams on the tackle there. Lakeem Williams, second and goal of the four. Have watched a game in life? Yes, I have. It's not a very good stadium. Very boring, very dull. Hard to get into and out of. Not a lot of character to it. It looks like an office building on the outside. And it's just... 
I'm not sure they made the right decision with, with the four video boards because they're, they're kind of on the smaller end of things compared to other stadiums. Calls of all spring football is back. There you go. I'm not sure calls going to be the law after this. We'll see. They're down, they're up three nothing, but that could change on this play because AJ Perry's going to run it for a touchdown. AJ Perry keeps it himself, and the Panthers for the first time today have the lead. A 95-yard drive. The Battlehawks only send four. Perry sees the hole up the A-gap, just takes himself on the QB draw, and it's easy money. The Panthers with their best drive of the day. And they're going to go for the conversion, obviously. Uh, one point from the two, two from the five, three from the ten. They're going to go for one, which makes sense here. Try and make it a um, four-point game. Handoff, Colburn in. I was gonna say if you're gonna go for usually if you're gonna go for one, you you gotta you gotta run the ball. Otherwise, it won't make a whole lot of sense at that point. Why not just go for two? But they do run the ball seven three. Panthers lead by four. You yeah, definitely have to change the intro. But I mean, I've done it. Will be dumb decisions before. I've done it. I might do one. I might do one on the Pirates tomorrow. Ones or yeah, I might do one on the first inning or the the, the runner that got out. But I have to find for the press conference and stuff. Thoughts on me most likely giving up on the Phillies after they go 2-28. <laughs> I mean, they'll be out in the corner dancing on your own. Attendance for this game, I'd probably wager 11K. Probably wager 11K. I don't know the exact number. I would guess Arlington had like 19. I'm guessing Arlington had like 18 or 19. Probably 18. All right, so kickoff coming up. Battlehawks trailing for the first time today. This is a result that I don't think anyone saw coming. Not this low scoring, at least. Not this low scoring. The Battlehawks offense, all these drives, about seven drives, I want to say. Only three points. So plenty of time. We're two-thirds of the way through this one. Again, if you are a member, thank you so much. You can show your support by dropping those emojis in the chat. We got the Panthers and the Battlehawks. We got 90 people in the stream. Thank you so much. Thank you for making this what is officially the most watched UFL stream that's currently taking place right now. I'm sure if Pernod does a game, that will get overtaken. But, you know, Pernod wants to hop on a game, by all means. Um, I have to manipulate some things in terms of the stream yard and everything, but I'm totally down because Pernod's going to probably do some UFL games. He talks a lot about the UFL, so. I'll probably do some UFL videos, too, on JG9 News. Yeah, so JG9 News... We're going to do... Oh, it was the Angels. I would never have guessed that. Wow. We're going to do on JG9 News recaps of the games, a weekly, a weekend recap of the games on JG9 News. We're going to do predictions for games. I'm going to do some stuff for games on JG9 News, like every single day now that the season's starting. We'll do like every day we'll drop a video for UFL. I'll just talk about the happenings in the UFL and, and, and talk about predictions and, and bets and whatnot, things I like, things I... Things I would stay away from. So, yeah. Yeah, this is the most watched stream right now. Not counting the, um... The streams of the illegal streams where it just takes you to a different website. Yeah, I think the next most watched is... Yeah, you know, there's one with, like, eight... Okay, there's one with, like, 8,000 people watching. That has to be botted. And it's just, it's... Eight other people watching, but, like, it just says, like, click the link on the stream to watch below. Like, it doesn't do anything. We do have some other people there doing the game. About, like, 10 viewers. Around. So, thank you for choosing to spend your time with me. Thank you for choosing to spend your time with me. Future channel, JG9 UFL. Um, like, I love talking about the UFL. I'm not sure I would ever do a channel. I feel like it actually, like... Because you do different channels to tie into different audiences. So, like, baseball is a different audience for football. But, like, JG9 News is different from JG9 because it's very different formatting. But I feel like UFL news, I feel like that's pretty similar to NFL news and whatnot. I don't think we'll mess up the algorithm that much. Here we go. Kickoff. Fielded at the 7. Taken out to the 30. And down at the 32-yard line is Shepard. Brought down there by Mike Tafua. 
the first down to 32. Can the Marlins go 0-162? I mean, you play the A's, you play the Rockies. You're going to get at least one win in that. Yo, look, 5-2. I know it's bad, but you got runners on first and second. DG watches illegal streams. I'm not even sure he watches sports based on the, the, the videos that I watched of his. I'm not even sure he watches sports. No, what? 69 pitches. Nice. First down. Handoff. Up the middle goes to Goldman. Who goes down to the 36. Bulls his way actually to the 37. Gets an extra yard. Gain a 5. Sportsdom, welcome to the garage tier. Thank you so much, man. As a member, you get a lot of cool perks, including your name at the end of each video. Members only Q&A streams and um, green text text your name. And you also get on top of that, um, your name scrolling during the stream that we're going to add in just a little bit once I get a chance to do it. So thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Really, really appreciate it. Welcome to the Guerrero tier, man. Happy to have you. And you get a, immediately using that membership to good use with the Panthers emoji. There you go. That's the reason to do it. There you go. Put that membership to use. There you go. Goldman again. Or actually, no, that was not Goldman. Excuse me. That was number 15, Jacob Sailors. Brings up third and four. So let me get your name in the bar. That's what's nice about having this like new setup with the ticker and everything. Like I can, I can do that, and it's actually pretty easy. There we go. We are now in the bar. Third and four. Over the middle, ball is caught at the forty-five to the fifty. Still going forty-five down to the forty-three yard line. Now the offensive explosion is happening. Jacob Sailors. Michigan, no answers for a drunken sailor early in the morning. It's the first down the 45-yard line. Gain of, let's call it about 23 yards. You know, Arizona, we don't get dark until winter until like 6 o'clock. It's nice. Like, you know the sun's coming up every day, and you know when it's setting every day. And there's not really a whole lot of variation, which I like. First down the 43. Handoff. Gain of one on the play, brought down. Looked like by Walter Palmore. How wait? How big is Palmore? How how much does Palmore weigh? I this was as he was getting up. That is a giant belly. How much does Palmore weigh? Three twenty. Yeah, I was gonna say that's a big dude. That is a big dude. Number ninety nine. Three hundred twenty pounds. And that was as less measurement in 2020. He might be bigger than that right now. Holy cow, that's a big dude clogging up the middle. Gets a stop there again at two. Play action. McCarron looking. Fires. Caught at the 25 to the 20. 15 out of bounds to the 14 yard line. It is the tight end, Jake Sutherland. And now the Battle Hawks showing off why they are one of the best offenses on paper. Gain of 29 in the first down. Oh, wait. You're the most watched UFL stream right now. You're right that AK1 is all bots. It has to be. Because they're, they're not showing the game. They're not talking. They're not, like, doing anything. They're not showing the game. It's just... It's, it's got to be all bots. Yeah, when I call, talk about, like, most watched stream, I'm talking the... The streams that are actually streams. So not these fake streams where it says, like, okay. Like, click on this and it says, click here to join... The, the, the to watch the game that takes you to a fake website that doesn't even show the game play action bubble screen caught Shepard Shepard gave him one on the play brought down there by Nate Brooks the corner second and nine of the 13 and it's like by a lot too like like the other streams I think the most I saw was like 17 people and this is we're near 100 which is incredible guys thank you so much we're at 78 right now really can't thank you guys enough this is going to be the place to watch UFL this year. I'm telling you, this is going to be the place to watch UFL. So, you like what you see? You like my commentary? Like interact with the chat and everything? Um, you like the background? You like everything that I do? Be sure to like and subscribe. Helps the channel out a lot. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss more of the action when we go live. We're going live for both games tomorrow. We'll be live at 11.45 a.m. Eastern for the first game. McCarron steps up, fires, caught by Aitman. Aitman tries to shake and bake down to the six-yard line, unable to escape the grasp 
of maybe the best linebacker in spring football right now, Frank Inda. But it's a gain of seven down to the six-yard line. Third and two. You figure you have to treat this as four-down territory. Running game has not been great today for the Battle Hawks, but you have to figure you treat this as four-down territory. This short yardage, this deep. Yeah, congrats to Lauren for reaching 100K. Absolutely. Yeah, she got sports great channel. Go check her out if you haven't already. The 2020 men's March Madness tournament was canceled due to COVID. Who do you think wins the natty? I mean, I like Dana a lot that year, but I, I would probably say San Diego State. Handoff. Goldman. Or no, um, Sailors, that is going to be short. Fourth and one, and you figure if you're running on third, you're going for it on fourth. Well, should take us to the end of the quarter, though. Thanks for talking to me. I got to go soon. All good, NKC. All, all good. Thank you for, for interacting with the chat. Thank you so much for being a fan. Really appreciate it, man. Really appreciate it. And hopefully, I get to see you tomorrow on the stream. Thank you again. All right, we actually have a stoppage due to an injury, it looks like. Not sure who the injured player is. I haven't shown it yet. So, got to check out what the stoppage is. It's going to be a fourth and one. You figure they're going to go for it. Unless they're measuring the spot, but that didn't look that close. 11 inches. Yeah, that, didn't, that did not look that close. That was like the one that happened in the Arlington game. That was like 5 inches. That looked pretty close. This didn't look close. So if, they, if that was what they were doing, like just doing a measurement. I don't know. That, that did not look that close. Alright, here we go. Fourth and one. Favorite hockey team? Um... I will get to that in a bit. I'll get to that in a bit. That's why I don't have one. Um, after this, once we get to the end of the quarter, because this is a big play coming up. Fourth and one. Fourth and 11 inches. So basically a full, basically a full foot. They don't have to get the snap off here. Do they just try and get him with a hard count? I'll just try and get him with a hard count. i try and get him with a hard count and then go for it actually... Yeah, that's what McCarron's doing. That's a veteran move right there. That's a veteran move. Michigan is... Not by... I didn't see anyone move on Michigan. I didn't see anyone flinch. I didn't see anyone flinch on Michigan. I don't know what... what, what uh, or on St. Louis. I, they, they want something. I didn't see any flinch. I didn't see any flinch. Dragons are not still in the XFL. No, they are not. They, are, they were one of the teams that did not make it. Three XFL teams didn't make it. It was the Vipers, the Guardians, and the Dragons. Seattle will be back at some point if they do expand out west. Problem is that it's just too far away. All right, let me put in the poll since we're in the fourth quarter. Now, who wins this game, Battlehawks or the Panthers? Let me know. Pan uh, Battlehawks were the heavy favorites this game, but obviously a lot of change since then. So, why do I have a favorite uh, NHL team? So, um, honestly, the lockout didn't help a lot when I was growing up. Um, the NHL was the league that just always had work stoppages, so didn't really get invested in a team that way. And on top of that, um, I would root for the Oats, but I just don't know where the Oats are going to be. I don't know where the Oats are going to be. So there's no reason for me to root for them if I don't know where they're going to be. I'm not going to get invested in a team that could move in a year. I don't know. I, I will be a Yotes fan if they build the, the arena and put a shovel in the, in the dirt and, like, plus, like, why would I go to Yotes games right now? It costs 200 bucks to go to a game. And it's out in Tempe, so I have to, like, drive or take the light rail there. Waste a whole day to watch a team that I don't really care about that could move. And tickets are ridiculously expensive because they play in a 5,000-seat arena. And a lot of people that go to the games are, are people that are um, fans of other teams. So, no reason for me to do that. Now, um, if they do build a new arena, build, like, a... 16,000 seat arena in Mesa where it's easy to access. I can get there in like 15 minutes. I'll I'll become a fan. I, I would love to be a fan of a hockey team. And I'll, I'll buy season tickets. Assuming they're they're reasonably priced. I mean, it's not really a bad seat in the house for hockey. I've sat in the upper deck before many times. Not really a bad seat. Will the Generals be back from future expansion or are they gone for good? My guess is that of the four teams that the five teams that we lost from the USFL, not counting Houston, because obviously you're not putting two teams in Houston. 
of the four, my guess is New Jersey is the least likely to come back. That's my guess. Just because the uh, stadium situation would not be great. I'm not sure how many fans you get to MetLife. I'm not sure what the appeal would be. It's too saturated of a market. My guess of the four teams to come back in order of likelihood, New Orleans, Pittsburgh, Philly, Jersey. And then Houston, obviously, not coming back. Because there's already a team in Houston. Yep, ESPN said Cowboys and Z Kelly open to a reunion. They have massive holes at running back. They lost Tony Pollard. They didn't get anyone. The backup running back right now is Rico Dowdle. Deuce Vaughn is the number two. He, didn't, he, might, he might have met the roster. He averaged like one yard a carry last year. Deuce Vaughn was terrible. You need three running backs. I don't know if Deuce Vaughn makes it. So you, a guy like Zeke, you draft a guy. He's the starter. Dowdle and Zeke then split as the backup. Like, that's not the worst idea. I think Zeke would make a lot of sense for the Cowboys. Because you can't just have... Unless you draft two running backs. They could draft two running backs. So if they don't draft two running backs, you need to get a veteran running back then. Because you can't go... Like, you're, they're going into the draft with Rico Dowdle as their number one and Deuce Vaughn as their two. Like, you can't do that. That's the worst running back unit. That would be the worst running back room in the last 10 years. How's it going, XC Gamer? Welcome to the stream. Suburban arenas never work. I don't know about never work. But... Mesa, I don't really consider that suburbs. Space is like a weird... It's complicated. It's complicated. Are the Breakers or Sea Dragons more likely to come back? Next year, I would say the Breakers. Because it's more geographically fit. But Seattle does have a stadium. They have that going in their favor. They have a stadium, but they're so far away, air travel will be a nightmare. So my guess is the Breakers next year are more likely to come back. I hope they both come back, though. <laughs> I'll see New Orleans playing where Tulane plays. That'd be a good-sized stadium for a UFL team. In my opinion, a lot of us from New York and Jersey would come out and pack the same if it was competitive. But, um... Oh, Michigan is using a challenge, a, a super challenge. <laughs> I didn't know that they were called super challenges. but So basically, you're allowed to challenge one thing a game. If you get it right, it's good. If you don't get it right, you lose a timeout. So if they don't get this right, Michigan loses a timeout. They're challenging whether or not St. Louis flinched. They're challenging whether this was a false start. A super challenge. That is... I like that. A super challenge. I didn't know they called super... I didn't know they called their super challenges. You can challenge anything. They can stand... I'm trying to read lips. Yeah, out of timeouts. Yep. I was going to say, I didn't think they flinched. I did not think there was a point. So Michigan, controversial decision because now you have no timeouts going into the fourth quarter. You burn all your three timeouts before the final 15 minutes. But the Guardians, they were like one of the least attended teams in the XFL in 2020 when they played in, in New York, in Jersey. It, it was not good. Okay, now the Pirates have 7-3. Oh, boy. Oh, and it's misplayed in the outfield. Fantastic. Fantastic. 63% of you still riding with the Battle Hawks to win this one. Fourth and inches. Here we go. Handoff. Stopped. Didn't get it. Didn't get it. The Battle Hawks come up short. What a stop by the Panthers! I have no idea about that trivia show. That sounds incredible. What a stop by the Panthers! Who needs the super challenge? Michigan ball at the five! They go up the middle twice and both times they come up short. I mean, Scottsdale would be like, that sounded like suburbs. Like, Scottsdale would be a good fit. Mesa, Scottsdale, anything like in that metro area. That's not like McCarthy X. I, I, I have no problem with the decision to go for it. You assume fourth and inches, you can get a yard. If this was back in 09, there would be a better crowd of fourth field. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. It's almost like how the Bandits were more popular than the Buccaneers back in the 80s. The Bandits drew better crowds than the Buccaneers. Like, if there were, if, honestly, if there was a merger between the USFL and the NFL back in the day, I honestly think they would have gotten rid of the Buccaneers and put in the Bandits. The Bandits had better branding. The Bandits had better branding and more popularity. Which is crazy. <laughs> like, I'm not even kidding. Like, the Bandits actually had... Or, like, you could put two teams in Tampa, the Bandits would... would you, 
Like, Tampa could be, like, a weird, like, two-market team. The Bandits would have sold more. I do have a Bandit Summit, though. I do have a Bandit Summit right over here. The Tampa Bay Bandit Summit. Yeah, Bandit Ball. Oh, yeah. Can't forget Bandit Ball. Can't forget Bandit Ball. I'm debating whether to get a USFL 2022 Bandit Summit. Because they had... But it, it, it was pretty slow to get those. And it's pretty similar. I, I had to get Birmingham and, and Memphis new helmets from 2022. Because obviously there's a massive difference in the helmets. Like the Birmingham helmet from the 80s is very different from the Birmingham helmet today. Memphis, same thing. Michigan, not so much. Michigan, this is pretty much the same helmet they had back in the day. Same exact helmet. They basically kept the same exact logo. Yeah, they're going to put in the Enzo Cabanas. Why they didn't do it before Super Bowl 57? I mean, they probably just came up with the idea last year. On top of that, the Cabanas for Super Bowl 57, I think you would have made more money doing the bleacher seats than the Cabanas. That's probably why. The, ble the, the Cabanas are not permanent. The Cabanas are not permanent. They are temporary. Like, they'll be taken out for, like, concerts and whatnot. Yeah, Burt Reynolds... No, no, Burt Reynolds was not a co-owner of, of the of the Bandits. You're, you're dead wrong on that. Burt Reynolds was not. Now, Turd Ferguson, he was a co-owner. But Burt Reynolds was not. Burt Reynolds was not. Um, Turd Ferguson was. First down at the five. Handoff. It goes to Hills. No gain on the play. Second and ten. How many teams in MLB have more than 100 losses? I'd say... I'm going to stick to Rockies and E's. You know, the problem with Seattle UFL team, they have to wait on open dates for the Saturday schedule. Yeah, that was part of the problem, too, with, with um, last year, because they play games at weird times. They had to play games on, like, Thursdays and, like, these weird hours. These weird days, and they lost a lot of fan support that way. And I'm honestly not doing well right now. Second and ten. Handoff. Hills. Hills have some room. First down. Hurdles the guy to the 20. Down to the 22-yard line. Get a 17 yards on the play. Brought down eventually by Carson Wells, but not before a gain of, 20, of 17 yards down to the 22. You know, Burt Reynolds loved football. I mean, I did a whole video on him doing um, announcing for a game. He played football. Burt Reynolds was a big football fan. I know who Andre the Giant is. His name is Andre. He's a Giant. <laughs> First down to 25, or 24. Slat route, incomplete pass. Intended target on the play was Trey Quinn. Yep, Tigers beat the White Sox 7-6 in 10. Saw the ending to that one. Wore a funny hat. You know, uh, there, was a, there was a show on. Scooby-Doo with uh, heads. How scrappy. <laughs> kind of like adventures and mysteries and stuff. <laughs> what is sponsored by a company that sold my ears? <laughs> EJ Perry on the run down to the 32 yard line. Gate of eight on the play brought down by Willie Harvey. I think you're thinking of the pen. The pen which is. <laughs> 32 to the 32, but there's a flag on the play. Holding on the offense, so this is coming back. So instead of third and two, it's second and 20. You know, Reynolds did play college football for State. He did. No, he was a big football fan. And he he announced the game, a Buccaneers preseason game. He was in the booth. He did the, um, he announced the Sun Bowl. You know the, um, so remember how I did the video on Alex Hawkins and how he got fired after that game with Vince Scully? Well, the main crew that um, CBS had was working the Sun Bowl. That's why. I don't know why they were working the Sun Bowl. That made no sense. Um, but it was a three-man booth. Burt Reynolds was the third man in the booth. And he played it straight, too. He, like, knew what he was talking about. Second 20. Sacked on the play at the five-yard line. The Panthers are going backwards. Sack on the play by Travis Feeney. Looking like Dwight Freeney on that one. Loss of nine, third and 29. How many championships for the Nets in the next six years? You gotta think that they gotta win one at some point. They gotta win one at some point. 
Oh, no, you're good. You have every right to break down with, with how bad they're playing right now. And check swing on the pitch in the dirt. Like, what, what are you doing here? They're in 28. We'll see if they even try to take any chance here. Just call a run, try and get some breathing room. They're just going to run the ball, get some breathing room. And they get a little bit, I guess. They get actually still keeping the pile going. Good run by Colbert to get at least two yards. Give him some breathing room, at least. Down to the eight-yard line. Fourth and 26. Packer fans, look away. Yeah, no, you can bend. You're absolute. You're allowed to bend. 100%. Yeah, Matt and Sun will call in a 90s Cowboys here will be awesome. You're done with this UFL Brad Proc this year? I mean, it's early. It's early. It's the first day. This always happens with spring football. It always happens with the first week. The first few weeks are always on the lower end of things. Always on the lower end of things. We saw it with the XFL. We saw it with the USFL. And they got way better in the second half of the year. We always saw that. Did anyone have a better March Madness ever than Mello? Be tough to tough to find someone. Feel at the 40. Shepard down to the 44. Yeah, Mello was something else that year. Flag on this play. As it stands, St. Louis ball at the 44, but we'll see what the flag is. Go Jags! Just moved to Tucson back in August. There you go. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Sports FRK 99, Sports Fork 99. Love to see other Jags fans in Arizona. There we go. There's there's dozens of us. There's dozens of us. The ref's talking to Anthony Beck, the head coach, so probably just figuring out do you want to re-kick? Figure this flag is going to be on Michigan. Do they want to re-kick? As it stands, 44-yard line. An eligible player downfield on the kicking team. Do you have him re-kick? They're going to have him re-kick. They're going to have him re-kick with a five-yard penalty. Nice Packers Eagles playoff game reference. Thank you. I mean, for the 26, you have to think that. If you don't think that, it's like... It's like one of the most famous plays ever. <laughs> like, I had to. That's probably why like, I love these teams. I can just, like, call back things, like, on the spot. So, fourth and... It was fourth and 26, but half the distance to the goal. So, the four-yard line. They're going to be putting this one away. Oakland A's might go 0-11 to start the season. Call them, folks. They were up last time I checked, but that was, like, 30 minutes ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, why not? Why not? All right, so fourth and 30, let's call it, at the four-yard line. Brock Miller on the punt. Can't believe the Cavs pass on Darko. <laughs> yeah, that was a big mistake. <laughs> punt fielded on the bounce of the 49 by Shepard, and Shepard down to the 44. So a good decision there to take the five-yard penalty if they... And uh, make him re-kick. Because now instead of having it at the 49-yard line, it's at the 44. Michigan needs a touchdown. They got 10.43 left to do it. Or St. Louis needs a touchdown, I should say. Dallas Cowboys have signed nobody breaking news. I mean, that's actually not true. They might sign Zeke. They might sign Zeke. <laughs> the report came out today. They might sign Zeke. So of all the days to do it, that was like the worst time for that joke. That was a fun offseason where the Cowboys did nothing. Yeah, Baltimore's going to be good this year. Baltimore's going to be good. You know, typical Jerry Jones failing to deliver. Yeah. They're all in. They're all in this year, folks. And they're all in by bringing back Mike McCarthy and by spending nothing and doing nothing in free agency. They're all in. <laughs> you know, the A's, like, like I, I hate when a, a team relocates. I hate when a team relocates. Relocation stinks. Like, it's like everything, like, you've been, like, supporting your whole life just taken away from you. It's, like, crazy. If LeBron James went to college, where would he have went? Would he have been the greatest college player of all time? Well, he wouldn't be the greatest of all time because he would have only played one season. He'd be one and done. If he stayed all four years, yes, 100%. Where would he have gone? My guess would be he would have stayed close by Ohio State. Start talk. Stop. We're at commercial break. We're, we're, we're at commercial break. There's nothing to talk about. It's literally... A, there's nothing on right now. It's literally at a commercial break right now. <laughs> there's literally... Trust me, I got to say it again. There's, there's nothing on. <laughs> What's the score? Do you, can you see the screen? 
Can you see the... I, I have a scoreboard. <laughs> it's 7-3. There's 10-43 left in the fourth. It's St. Louis ball at the 44. And St. Louis has the ball. I have everything on the scoreboard. Megalodon with a two. Thank you so much. Guns are gleaming, Glock and Globe, and there you go. There you go. You know, we're at commercial. I got a scoreboard. Don't worry. I've got the scoreboard. We play, play commercials. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Welcome to the stream, Matthew. Welcome to the stream. You know, we do this for all the UFL games. So if you like what you see, be sure to like and subscribe. And hit the notification bell so you don't miss the action. Um, let me get your name in there, Michael. Thank you so much, man. You know, there's literally nothing happening right now. All right, now we're back. First down the 44-yard line. McCarron in the gun. Three wide, two on the near side, one on the far side. Battle Hawks really struggling offensively today. Need to get something going. Time is running out. They've got some great field position, though. Handoff. This one goes to Sailors. And Sailors, the run game has done nothing this half. Brooks on the stop. Loss of two. Nate Brooks. Last drive ended at the five-yard line after back-to-back -back runs that went nowhere. This run also going nowhere. At this point, I don't want to say abandon the run, but you might have to. You might have to at this point. Yeah, no, it's start up again. Second and 12. Ball at the 46 after the loss of two by Sailors. Second and 12. Screen pass, and it hits off the lineman's helmet. <laughs> you don't see that every day. Val Alexander. Vattel Alexander, they're trying to set the screen pass to Sailors, and it goes off of his helmet instead. When it's not your day, it's not your day. <laughs> now, I will say, one of the storylines from last year, if you watch both the XFL and the USFL, was that the USFL teams were way better at running the ball. And we're seeing that. Birmingham was way better at running the ball than Arlington today. Marable was way better than uh, Smith and, and what, whatever else was happening with, with Arlington. St. Louis, um, nothing going in the run game. Michigan, Hills playing well. USFL had better run games last year. That's wide open. Watch run backwards! No, we ran backwards! Oh my goodness, Jamarcus Bradley had a first down and then ran backwards! And now it's fourth. There was a flag on the play, so it might not count anyways. That should have been a first down. Then Bradley decides to get green and run backwards and loses the first down. Again, we don't know what the flag is. We'll see what the flag is, but... Oh, you cannot do that. Situational awareness. Personal foul. Face mask on the defense. All right, so it doesn't matter, but still. Oh, he's going to get cheered up from his coach on that one. So is that the 32 at 15? So first down the 17-yard line after the face mask. Oh, man. Yeah, pull the Blake Jackson. All right, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They did get the first because of the face mask, but still. And if you remember, drop your support with the flag emojis. And also, we got the teams. We got Michigan and we got St. Louis. And we got all the teams from the UFL this season. So, first down. Ohio State, if they had LeBron James in the 04 tournament, probably. I mean, they'd probably win 26 games. I mean, LeBron can change a game single handedly. All right, first down, the 20 yard line. So, they're going to mark it. Yeah, crisis over. Play action. McCarron. Plenty of time. All day to throw. Nothing open, nothing doing. Now trying to sip in the pocket. Now looking, still looking. They send four. McCarron still with like 10 seconds to throw. Now he fires it. It's caught at the five yard line. All day to throw. And Darius Shepard making himself open again of 15 yards. First and goal. Darius Shepard having a nice game so far tonight. Had an attorney to throw that ball. Great coverage by getting to the linebacker on Shepard. You can see plays like that why Gindo's one of the best linebackers in the spring football circuit, but, I mean, you can't cover for that long. I mean, Shepard adjusted his route once and adjusted a second time, and not keeping up with that. First and goal at the five. Next play with McCarron sipping in the pocket. Next play with Shepard not bailing on the route. Play action. McCarron looking in the flat, not there. Now going to far corner of the end zone, and... Okay, that was a weird camera thing by Fox. I want see that. They can play pass. I think it was looking for Butler, but... They don't see that. They, they cut to... I don't know why they cut. They cut to the um, an establishing shot of Ford Field. If anyone saw that, that was a weird camera error. Weird, weird directing error by Fox there. You know, to lose your first three at home against the Pirates, 
Like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. It's bad. Especially after the offseason where there's nothing. Like, yeah, no, this this should be infuriating for Marlon Spence. Second and goal. Shepard in motion. Play action. McCarron looking in the flat. He's got his man. Tight end. Sutherland. Touchdown. Battlehawks. Caw is the law. For the first time today, the Battlehawks find the end zone. And it's 9 7. Decision to make here. Because usually I'd say, look, go for one, make it a three point game. But if you're going for one, you're running the ball, but you're, you're not running the ball that well today. Oh, guards have 10 3 now? Oh, man. Oof. Oh, it got worse. It got worse. So. You go for two. Yeah, I think you go for two here. Because if you're going to run the ball, you go for one, but you can't run the ball well. If you're going to throw the ball, you might as well go for two because you're calling the same plays from a one-point try and a two-point try if you're throwing it. All right, so extra point try from the two-yard line. McCarron, plenty of time. It's the only send for McCarron trying to wreck traffic. Now he's pressured. Throws on the run. Low throw. Incomplete. Looking to the corner of the end zone. Intended target. Looked like Hakeem Butler, who's been held in check today for the most part, relatively speaking, compared to... What expectations were? 9-7 game. 7.55 left. I'll put another poll out there. Maybe this new score changes things. Battlehawks or the Panthers? Who wins? The un over under for this game was 42.5. I think the under is pretty safely going to cash in, barring anything absurd, like a vikings Ravens situation. Oh, yeah, I met plenty of Jaguars players. Yeah. Like, I've met, I've met plenty of them, like, in... Um, just in passing. But yeah, no, I, I like... I bet Jones Drew. I met MJD. He's awesome. Who wins this game? Let me know in the comments down below and in that poll. Yeah, I was going to say, use the wrong emoji. Use a lot of Renegades emojis. Yeah. No, the R is not for Battlehawks. There's not even an R in St. Louis Battlehawks. Call is the law. That's, that's what we know. No, no, you don't go for one there. Here's why you don't go for one. Because... Here's why you don't go for one. You go for one from the two-yard line if you're going to run the ball. Which, St. Louis cannot run the ball. We've established that. This game. They cannot run the ball. Michigan has been all over them. So if you're going to go for it, you have to... And you have to go for it, obviously. If you're going to go for it, you have to throw the ball. Your play from the two-yard line is the same as your play from the five-yard line. You're not calling a play from the two that you wouldn't call from the five if you're throwing the ball. So at that point, you might as well go for two because you have nothing to lose. The, the reward is that you gain an extra point. The risk is, okay, you, you, nothing. Risk is absolutely nothing. Well, the Mullins go home 162. <laughs> I don't think it would be that bad. But I, I, I was very bullish on them. I did say I didn't think they were making the playoffs. I did say I had the Nationals above them this year, potentially. And we'll see. We'll see. So again, still commercial break, 754, Michigan Bowl, when we get back. Michigan struggling offensively today, just one touchdown. They had the second worst offense in the USFL last season. Oakland's mayor claims their money is there for a new stadium. But yeah, if that's the case, why? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense then. If the money's there, then why they let the Warriors walk? Why they let the Raiders walk? It doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't they do anything to the surrounding area? It doesn't make any sense. All right, here we go. Kicking off as the Battle Hawks. 59% of you riding with St. Louis to win this game. Again, if you want to bet on the U on the UFL, I have to like get used to not saying USFL. Of course I have it. But if you want to bet on the UFL, use my promo code at price picks. 100 percent deposit match up to 100 bucks. Promo code Gator9. You can see all the bets on the bottom line on that ticker. UFL is streaming on Fox. Tomorrow's game is on ESPN. So ESPN Plus, if you can find ESPN stream, that's good. ESPN Plus. Games are on ESPN tomorrow. This game is on Fox right now. Oh, man, that's... It's been that kind of game for the Marlins. That was... 
It's a weak ground ball that goes off of first base, and oh man. All right, kickoff is Fielder. They fake the reverse. It's going to be Fielder at the 25 to the 30. Got some room to the 40, down the 44-yard line. Marcus Sims to the 44. So good field position for the Panthers. Yeah, well, it's not your day, Miami. It's not your day. That was, whew, that was bad. Everyone right, on a commercial break. Oh, so we do the kickoff and... You off first face, off the face. We're at commercial break. We're at the he guess that's that. So, nothing really to talk about here. <laughs> Blake Horn, very underrated draft. I mean, prospect. I mean, he's got a lot of carries. He's on the older side of things. I, I'm guessing he's gonna go round two, like late round two, early round three. Finish. Um, no, game's not finished. We got 7:47 left. That's what I mean. Where will Oakland play from 2025 to 27? My guess is they'll play... I'm leaning more towards Salt Lake at this point. All right, actually, no harm done for the Marlins. They get the double play. I'm leaning more toward Salt Lake. But I could see Sacramento. And you see all the over-unders. You can bet. Um, tomorrow we got some games. Memphis-Houston, 40.5 over-under. DC San Antonio 43 and a half. We got both those games streaming starting at 11:45 Eastern. Um, we also have in terms of the lines tomorrow, if you want to bet, DC is a minus six over San Antonio. Not surprising. Memphis, it's basically a pick up minus one over Houston. That could be a very interesting game. And then money lines, if you care about that, Memphis minus 115, Houston's minus 105. And then the other game, DC minus 278, San Antonio plus 225. St. Louis. Really, really struggling this game offensively. They finally got something going on the last drive. Can't run the ball, though. Minus 310 favorite. You know, Chris Will, yeah, he was not good in the NFL. You know, teams have tried the three-point. Obviously not this season because we're only on game two, but teams have tried the three-point. They, they got it before. We, we saw it a few times last year in the, in the XFL. They got it. You know, scores on seven tomorrow on Fox. And tomorrow, the UFO games are on ESPN. So, we got a game at 12 and a game at 3, Eastern time. So, be a fun way to spend Easter Sunday. Fun way to spend Easter Sunday. We got that. We got, obviously, Elite Eight happening. A lot of cool stuff happening in the sports world. And again, be sure you like and subscribe. Helps the channel out a lot. And so you know when we go live for all the games. 110 people in the stream now. I've not seen the video that I put out on the team on, our, on the worst kicker for... Every team. I'm assuming the Jags was Hauschka. It had to be Hauschka. He, he was terrible. He made no kicks with us. And he missed a field goal from 42 yards that was short. Hills on the run. First down. Then some to the 40. Out of bounds to the 39 yard line. Remember, because of that missed two-point conversion. It's only a two-point game. So a field goal gives Michigan the lead. They have no timeouts to work with. But again, a 17 for the leading rusher in the USFL last season. Wes Hills. Who got, got acquired from New Orleans because New Orleans does not exist anymore. It's 9 7. 9 7 Battlehawks. 7 19 left. First and 10. But the Panthers are driving. And yeah, we got all the action on the scoreboard. First down of 38. They give once again Hills. Giant hole in the second level to the 25. 20. In the red zone to the 16 yard line. Gain of 23. Panthers in the red zone. So this is the first time I got rid of the extra point kick? No. Um, XFL had the conversion in 2020 and in 2023. But um, USFL had regular extra points last year. You could go for three in the USFL last year, but you, they had regular extra points. This is basically XFL. Where's the scoreboard? Are you watching on the same thing? You, it's on the, the top of the screen. First and ten. Hills that time, nothing doing. Gain of just one. Second and nine. You see it above. If you could see my head, it, it's above the head. There's a scoreboard. It's got the logo and the logos of each team. It's got a running clock. Yeah, I mean, it's still a long season for the Marlins. Like, I get being frustrated. Like, it's not reaching the Jags levels yet just because that was the end of the season. If the 2023 Carolina Panthers played against their 2001 counterpart, they lose in a blowout. It'd be bad. It'd be a bad game. I mean, 
Bryce Young had nothing to work with. Yeah, I think the all one team would win. 23 team was a joke. Second and nine. Perry steps up. He's got some room to run. And he's going to go down at the eight-yard line. Where are you? Are you see? That's obvious. You can't see it. Third and fourth, the eight. You figure here, obviously, field goal gives them the lead. So you figure it's not four down territory. Top right corner. So if you see my face, you see it's above the... If you if you can see the stream, you should be able to see the scoreboard. Maybe maybe your, your thing is too zoomed in. Maybe it's that. So it only sees like a part of the screen. Third and four. Perry looking, and he cannot avoid the sack, but he gets out of it, and he gets a touchdown! AJ Perry into the end zone! Looked like he was in trouble, looked like he was going to go down, and then he juked a man on the shoes, and AJ Perry is in for the second time today! Two rushing touchdowns for Perry, and now you have to think you go for two here, make it 15-9. You gotta go for two here. And I'm assuming they're gonna go for two. EJ Perry using his legs today. He has legs, he knows how to use them. Two point try, 13 9 game. It's a huge, huge play coming up here. St. Louis on the ropes will be a massive upset, one of the biggest on paper in spring football in recent years. People had Michigan as the worst team in the league. People had St. Louis as the best team in the league. And look at what's happening. Two-point try. It is caught. He's in. Devin Ross. Perry using his legs on the touchdown. Using his arm on the two-point try. 15-9 ball game. Hey, there you go. Nice. You have score. There you go. With five minutes left, the Panthers potentially... About to pull off a massive upset. Predictions for the NFL schedule. Ooh. Um, I can't tell you like like the whole schedule. I can tell you the well, let me let me put in a poll in first. Who do you think wins this game? Again, tomorrow we got all the games, starting with the DC game. Yeah, sure. Support if you're a Panthers fan. This is the time to do it. After a heartbreaking loss last year at Pittsburgh in OT, some down expectations this year. I mean, this is the way to do it. Oh, yeah, Illinois just blew a layup. Like, uncontested layup. Illinois just blew a layup. They're down by six. Oh, man, that's bad. We have not had the Panthers leading in a poll today, but for the first time, it looks like Panthers are leading in a poll, according to the chat. 54% of you run with Michigan as things saying, I'm voting that poll. I'll close the poll once kickoff happens. Should they have gone for three? No. No, you go for two there. You go for two there. Because you go for three, it's a high risk play. If you don't get it, you're down 13 9, and Battle Hawks, you get the touchdown automatically, you're, you're tied up. I mean, you, automatically, you have the lead. Go for two, it's a higher percentage play, and it forces the Battle Hawks to at least get a conversion. It's the right play. It's the right play. Why two and not three? Three's from the ten yard line, two's from the five. The you get you have a better chance of getting a two point play than a three point play. The thing is that if you go for two, you make it 15-9, and the Battle Hawks need to get a conversion to take the lead. If you go for three, the Battle Hawks will still go for two, in all likelihood. Because here's the thing. We've established the Battle Hawks are not going for one. Battle Hawks are probably not going for one. I mean, if it's 15-all, they'll go for one, because why not at that point? But if it's 16-9, they're probably not going for one, because they can't run the ball. And your passing plays are about the same from the one as they are from the two. So, you're just shooting yourself in the foot if you go for three. Because it's a high-risk play. You might not get it. Be 13-9. If it's 16-9, you get it. All right, that's great. But St. Louis will probably just go for two. 
Nothing changes. No onside kicks. So you can onside kick, but um, you have to declare it, but no one's going to do that. Fourth and 12 is what it is. It's fourth and 12 at the 28-yard line. 15-9 ball game. Five minutes left. 67% of you running with Michigan. Michigan heavy underdogs. Seven-point underdogs. Plus 250. The minus 310 favorite could go down in a stunner, potentially. Kickoff is fielded to the 30. 35. Shepard at the 40. Shepard, 45, 50. 45. They're going to have some good field position, though. They're going to have some good field position at the 45-yard line. Battle Hawks not going away quietly. First and 10 at the 45. You know, special teams has been fun. Special teams has been fun. Will NFL Network do it to fill the spot? Probably just reruns of Total Access. Probably just reruns of NFL Total Access. What's true that came close to going into overtime deserve the most to go into OT? Uh, Rams Titans would have been fun. Rams Titans would have been fun. Alina down by six. 19-13. First down the 44-yard line. Great return by Shepard, who has been flying today. He's been the best player on the field for the Battle Hawks. Comeback route. Caught. Gain of five on the play. Blake Jackson on the grab. Okay, Battle Hawks fall three timeouts. So it's not necessarily do or die. Michigan, no timeouts. Michigan up by six. Oh, we don't have the Illini scoreboard, just the XFL scoreboard. Or the UFL scoreboard. I I I have to get you saying UFL. I'm so used to not saying it. So if I pitch play, this one will be a gain of three. Then he loses the ball, but he was down. He was down. Corey and, Bar Corey and Ballard falls on it, but he was down. Goldman gain of three. Figure third and two, it's four down territory. Let's double check, make sure. Okay, Panthers still have a challenge. Yeah, elbows down, knees down, every part of the body in the hokey pokey is down. Clean or clear call. Four minutes left. Third and two. Battle Hulk see a touchdown. If they score. I'll explain the overtime rules if we get to that point. Third and two. Three wide, one on the near side, two on the far side. Butler, the man on the near side. Third and two. The give. First down. Finally, a good run for the Battle Hawks. Goldman down to the 29. Game of seven. Let's see if that's, that's this league. UFL is this league. It's the merger of the XFL and the U USFL. Is there live betting on UFL because DraftKings isn't showing it? Um, I don't know if there's live betting on the UFL. I think you can live bet, but you can bet on um, you can bet beforehand, and Prize Picks you can bet you can bet on UFL. They do player props on pri on Prize Picks. They don't do them on DraftKings, but Prize Picks they do. Which is why I use my promo code. It helps out a lot. That run goes nowhere. That run goes nowhere. Second and ten. In previous stream, I said what compared to was fifty three and fourteen. I only said that because Rams lost both games between Rapid and Dynasty. That makes sense. So from like a retrospective angle, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, at the time, no. But, like, in, as a retrospective angle, that makes sense. As soon as I say that, Swallow gets swallowed for no game. <laughs> it's the jinx right there. Battlehawks killing a lot of clock, making sure that this will be a final drive. All right, second and ten. Empty backfield, five wide, two on the near side, three on the far side. You got Butler lined up on the near side. He's the man to watch out for, along with the running back, Goldman. McCarron, looking. Fires. Comeback route. Goldman incomplete. Out of bounds. Third and ten. Now this is where it gets interesting. If you can... Well, because of the clock rules, I don't think... I was going to say, do you consider potentially, if you don't get this here, do you consider potentially kicking a field goal? But I don't think you can do it. I don't think you can do it. Third and ten. So you gotta get you probably gotta get this off with two-minute warning. 209 left ball to 29. McCarron. Three wide. Panthers send five. Checks it off to the running back. Or yes, to the running back. Sailors incomplete. That'll take us to the two-minute warning. 159 left. Incomplete pass. We have a low throw. It's now it's at fourth imaginable. It's fourth and long. And now decision time for the Battle Hawks. They have all their timeouts. They have all their timeouts. Do you consider it? Yeah, 
Yeah, I would. This is interesting. And here's the I'm not even sure you need to necessarily do 4th and 12 option. I honestly don't know if you need to do the 4th and 12 option. Because you have all your timeouts. You gotta stop. You're fine. Should they go for it or kick the field goal? You could go either way with this. Well, here's, here's the thing. If you're going to kick it off deep, it makes sense to kick the field goal here. Dumb decision if you go for it here, if you kick the field goal and then go for the 4th and 12. Because this is 4th and 10. So what's the point of going for it on 4th and 12 and not going for a 4th and 10? So I don't know what they're going to do here. I will say this. If they kick the field goal and then go for the 4th and 12, it is stupid. It is stupid because this is 4th and 10. So you can either go for it on 4th and 10. If you get it, you're basically in the red zone. Or you can kick the field goal and then go for it on 4th and 12. And then you still have to drive another like 40 yards just to tie the game up. So that wouldn't make any sense. But 73% you think they should go for it. I, I'm leaning toward yes. I'm leaning toward go for it. If Here's the thing. If, if, it, if it was reversed where you have the St. Louis running game that can't do anything for the most part, I would say yeah. But look, St. Louis defense is playing fine, I guess. But West Hills is running very, very well. I'm not sure you can stop him three times for 10 yards and three three things. So, whatever they decide to do here, as long as they don't kick the field goal and they go for a 4th and 12. As long as they don't kick the field goal and go for a 4th and 12. It will be good. <laughs> I think they say the word stupid in G-rated movies. <laughs> and PG-rated, too. Alright, here we go. They are going for it. Alright. So, no dumb decision episode, at least. Here we go. 29 yard line. Got to get to the 19. It's not the ball game, but it's awfully close. Four wide. McCarron, they only send three. They've tried that a few times. It hasn't worked out. He's got time to throw. High throw caught by Edmund. And you have to question the defense. Why would you send three? They've tried that a few times today, and every single time, McCarron has time and he makes magic happen. Every time they send three, it fails. Every single time they've sent three, it fails. They send three here for some reason. And great throw by McCarron. Great catch by him to keep both feet in bounds. But you have to question, why on earth would you only send three? It happened earlier. Remember earlier was third and ten or third and eight or something like that? And they sent three and McCarron had plenty of time to work with? Oh, man. Dumb defense there by the Panthers. First and goal at the four. McCarron, looking, end zone, incomplete. He did not get the feed in. Shepard, incomplete. Remember, if you ever thought about counting out St. Louis, remember, this was a team, remember, week one last season in the XFL against San Antonio. They were down by, I believe it was 15 points with two minutes left in the fourth quarter, and they won the game. Remember that. They were down by 15 with two minutes left. Looking to make another week one magical comeback happen. Here we go. Second and goal. Ball the four. Do they even consider running at least once? Okay, Michigan has no timeouts. They do. And now you can churn some clock if you want to do that, but they, you're really in do or die mode at that point. Handoff goes nowhere. Third and goal. Now you got to throw it twice. Unless, oh man. Thanks for streaming. I had to leave the house so I have to listen to call. Oh, good. Ab 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 Abdul 9448. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Do you run the ball here and put it all on one play? Because then Michigan want to get a chance to touch the ball again. Do you do it? Well, you don't do here is take a timeout. You don't You don't take a timeout here. You got to call a play. But do you consider running and then put it all on, on one play? Third and goal. McCarron. Look it. First two reads aren't there. Looking to escape the sack. He will for the moment. Now fires. End zone. Low throw. Goldman. Did he get his? Did he catch it? Incomplete. Hit the ground. Hit the ground. Incomplete. Brings a fourth and goal. 
Spencer the Fiber, thank you so much. In hockey, there is a rule that if you pull the goalie in overtime and the other team scores, you lose the overtime point. Yeah, I didn't know about the rule until the other day when, when it happened to the Wild, but they won the game. I didn't know that rule. I don't know why that rule exists, but that is a weird rule. I've never seen that enforced before. I've never seen it happen before. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. It's been a fun, fun stream, guys. Here we go. Fourth and goal. Ball at the five. Not the ball game because the ball looks all the timeouts, but it's awfully close. Four wide. McCarron. Looking. End zone shot! Caught! Amen once again! Amen! And on that one! Touchdown, St. Louis! We're all tied up! Amen! The go-to man on back-to-back -back fourth downs! Who else but Marcel Amen? How about that? Twice now! They go to Amen on fourth down inside two minutes! Twice! He comes up clutch! Got both feet in, clearly stayed in bounds. Now they're gonna do it. Now you figure you gotta go for one. Yeah, now there's no point in not going for one. Alright, Spencer the number two, are they wild did it today? Oh, they did it again today? Oh, wait, they did it the other week, like two weeks ago. I didn't realize they did it again today. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that. Two, one point try. Man in motion. Looking. First screen up there. Fires wide open to Sutherland. Bellhawks have the lead. Call is the law. 16, 15, 49 seconds left. Yeah, that's how it made sense to only go for one because there's no difference between one and two. Thank you for the zoom, man. I, I didn't realize the Wild did today. Oh my goodness. This is deja vu from the last time they played opening day. I don't, I don't know if they're going to show it. If they talked about it on the broadcast. Remember week one last year. Down by 15 with two minutes left. And they come back. More heroics here. A fourth and long. Another fourth down conversion. Unbelievable stuff. But still time left. This fourth quarter has been wild. Put a quick poll out there. Who wins this game? Again, be sure you like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. Heartbreak, potentially. Last season, Panthers lost in overtime. Heartbreaking fashion. Starting the season off maybe the same way. Almost pulled off the upset. But it's 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 going to be tough. But 49 seconds left. Still plenty of time. But on that poll, we have 160 people in the stream. Thank you so much. Again, we stream all the UFL games here in this studio with all the UFL helmets. Be sure to like and subscribe. Help the channel out. Hit the notification bell. See when they actually go live. Stream both games tomorrow. And here we go. Starting at 11.45 a.m. Eastern. Kickoff is going to be fielded at the 15-yard line. To the 25. Take it out to the 30. 35-yard line. 44 seconds left. Marcus Sims takes that to the 35. Not the best, not the worst. Obviously, four down territory this point on. You figure for Jake Bates, the kicker, you got to get at least 30 yards. Got to get at least 30. 72% of you think the Battle Hawks hold on and win this one, just like they did in week one last year. Let's see what happens. Like and subscribe. Thank you so much, Ball9948. Thank you so much. It really means a lot to me. Thank you so much. And again, all YouTube members can use emojis. Including the Battle Hawks logo and the Panthers logo. You get one of those cool perks. One of those cool perks. I mean, to be fair, the Wilds did that two weeks ago and they won the game. So you live by that, you die by that. So Battle Hawks will call timeout just to get everything situated, get everything sorted out. Everything set up. Again, tomorrow we're doing both games starting at 11.45 Eastern. Both games airing on ESPN. I'll be streaming, doing commentary on these games like I have been today with the scoreboard, with that ticker at the bottom. And again, if you like betting on the UFL, you want to bet on it, you want to see some lines that you like, see some player props that you like, be sure to use my promo code at Price Picks. Promo code Jaguar, or promo code Gator9. 100% deposit match up to 100 bucks. Helps the channel out a lot if you do that. So thank you so much for all the love and support. Here we go. Yeah, Tigers won 7, 6, and extras. 23-21 UConn for those curious. And here we go. 190 people in the stream. 44 seconds left. Here we go. Kenny J. Perry makes some magic happen. What a crazy first state of the season. Four wide, three on the first one on the other side. In the flat, one-handed grab. Oh, man. All right. Game of four on the play. 
by Matthew Colburn. Again, Michigan has no timeouts to work with. What a grab by Colburn. One-handed. Second and six. And no chance that they're going to run the ball here. And no timeouts. How's it going to go? So welcome back. We got a lot of people in the stream now. We got 177 people. Here we go. Second and six. Four wide. Perry. Looking. Escapes the sack. Fires out of bounds. Incomplete pass. With 35 seconds left. Third and six. And Jake Bates, the kicker for the Panthers. You figure you got to get to about the 35 yard line. Jake Bates, he did hit a 67 yarder on Arkansas Pro Day, Graham. That was Pro Day. He does have a strong leg. Here we go. Third and six. Perry looking. Fires. Low throw, did that hit the ground? It did. So Colburn not able to make the grab. Falls incomplete. Fourth and six. Yeah, no, Panthers did not get blown. They put up a heck of a fight. Put up a heck of a fight this game. They did a lot more than a lot of people expected. But it's going to come down to this play. They had a fourth and ten. They only sent three. And that backfired. I think there's going to be a lot of questions asked about why they only sent three on that fourth and ten when McCarron has been... I don't even know what McCarron's pass ring has been on when they only sent three, but I'm assuming he's completed every pass. That's what it seems like. Fourth and six. This is the ball game. Perry. Battle hook sent four. Perry fires. Open. Caught at the 46-yard line. What a game of clutch fourth down conversions by both teams. John Hightower. What a time for your first grab. And Perry is just going to spike this ball with 46... The 46-yard line, 18 seconds left. Second and 10 at the St. Louis 46. What a time for your first catch. The college timing rules in effect. Second and 10 at the 46. Yeah, what's their kicker's range? He hit from 67 in pro day. But... I'm trying to find his long. They don't really have. I can't find the long on. Like, he wasn't in the he wasn't in the league last year. I can't find long on the college website either. Second and ten, Perry sideline throw complete pass. Third and ten, fourteen seconds. Yeah. What we know is that Bates hit from sixty seven in a pro day. It's in a dome. We've seen magic happen in this dome in the USFL. We saw Luis Aguilar last year in that. General Stars game. You know, Perry's ring is 43. I'm, I'm thinking like McCarron's ring when they only send three. My guess is that you let Bates try from anything inside 60. Perry fires incomplete, tenant for Colburn. And now you have a decision. Again, like I said, Bates had a 64... He made from 67 in Arkansas Pro Day. They're going to send him out. I get it. Believe me, I get it. I get it. Your odds of getting 10 yards and then... Because you don't always get 10 yards. You have to go out of bounds, too. Because you don't have any timeouts. Dan Campbell with a tour. Um, or Spence, Spence with a tour. Dan Campbell would be proud of the Wild. Yes, he would be. Yes, he would be. I get it. I get this decision. I get this decision. Here we go. For one of the greatest kicks of all time. Again, we've seen at Ford Field some long kicks. Justin Tucker, a name just, just to say. 64-yard try for the win. Iced him. Oh, but he, he's, he could do it. He could do it. You know what? 64 yards. He could do it. You know? This guy can do it. Spence with the tour again. Thank you so much. I'm going to get your name and number. or Your name's already in there. He could do it. I mean, that was good. He's got the leg again. He from 6-7 in Arkansas Pro Day. That was good. 
What a use of the ice. That would have been good. Oh my goodness. This guy can do it. It's a low trajectory, but he could do it. This for the bowl game. The longest kick in NFL history came on this field. Justin Tucker. The longest kick in UFL history could come on this field. Here we go. Jake Bates. Low snap. Kick is up. It is straight up. It's long enough. It's good. 64 yards. The Panthers. 64 yards. Jake Bates. The longest kick in spring football history. The longest kick in NFL history. Both come on this field at Ford Field. It's an 18-16 ball game. How good is that? Jake the Snake. Oh my goodness. He hit twice from 64. Oh, that's going to get you a look at the NFL. That's going to get you a look at the NFL, son. Oh my goodness. What a game. Three seconds left. Michigan on the verge of pulling off a stunning upset. 18-16. The Nathaniel Hackett range worked. Well, that was different. That was different. That was a terrible decision. They, like, ran the clock and burned all their time on it. I get why they kicked it there, and it worked. Oh, my goodness. 18-16. The Panthers. Huge underdogs. What a game. What a finish. You have the NFL record 66 without Justin Tucker on this field. Ford Field in that Ravens-Lions game. That is a spring football record. 64 is a spring football record. Longest kick in NFL history was on this field. Oh my goodness. 230 people in the stream. Thank you so much. Be sure to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell again. We're doing both US UFL games tomorrow. Starting at 11.45 Eastern. First field goal made since high school. That's why I couldn't find his career long. Because he never kicked. That's why. That's why I couldn't find his long. Because he never kicked. Um, but he did hit from 67 on a pro day. I'll put it this way. You kick like that. You kick like that. You're going to the NFL, son. You're going to the NFL. You kick like that. Oh, my goodness. Three seconds left. And they're going to kick it just a squib, which makes a lot of sense. Field at the 29. Shepard. Final play. 45 to the 47. Look at a lateral. He loses the ball. That is going to do it. The Michigan Panthers have pulled off a stunning upset. The UFL favorites to win it all. Go down in a stunner. 18-16 the final. The Michigan Panthers with a thrilling win. <laughs> it was a 3-0 game at the half. Who would have thought it turned out like this? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh my goodness. You, you, there's about 10 teams that looked at that like, we want this guy. There's about 10 teams that want that guy. Oh man. No, I shouldn't, no, shouldn't have gone for three. That, that's, that's hindsight. Who expects to get in a 64 yarder? Who expects to get in a 64 yarder? Because keep in mind, if you go for three and you miss, it'd be 15 all. So it makes no sense to do that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the USFL goes 2-0. and And this team right here, the Michigan Panthers, emerge victorious. USFL teams go 2-0. and The battle for superiority. Oh my goodness. Jay Bates, I mean the clear MVP of this game. 64 yards. And you know, it's an underrated play. It's not going to get talked about a lot. The one-handed grab by Colburn. It was a four-yard gain. I'm not sure from 68 they tried that. I'm not sure from 68 they tried that. That four-yard one-handed grab that went for first 10, second, and six, that might have been the underrated play of the game. Heck of an effort by the Battle Hog Slate, but the Michigan Panthers in a thrilling game. <laughs> Who saw that one coming? Oh, my goodness. Who? I don't even know what to say to that one. Oh, man. I'm glad I was on the call with you guys for that one. Oh, man, what a day for opening season. What an opening day. 64 yards. Joe 
Horticle with the two. I'm a Battle Hawks fan. I can't be mad at that. Yeah, good football is good football. Just got to tip your cap to that one. Yeah, I mean, some concerns with St. Louis, obviously, after that one. The run game is a big concern. I mean, shot themselves in the foot with how bad they ran but down by the goal line. But, um, oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you for the tour, man. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Again, we're doing all the UFL games this season. Um, oh, my goodness. That was insane. <laughs> that is why spring football rocks. That is why I love doing this. That is exactly why I love doing this. And that's why I got the setup. That's why I love streaming with you guys. That is incredible. Yeah, second chance. I'm not even sure it was a second chance. It's more like a first chance. It was more like a first chance. This guy's never kicked before. Sports Talk Show with a two. And thank you so much. 2024 football play of the year. You know, I'd be inclined to agree. I, I'd be right now inclined to agree. A 64-yard try like that? I mean, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. There's some places that just leave me speechless. Yeah, Ravens vs. Lions 2021 identical video coming? Could be. I mean, it was that was an 18... That was 18-16 too, right? But that, that was 60... That was 61-yarder. Although it wasn't six field goals. I mean, Tucker was six field goals that game. This was not six field goals. Unbelievable. Jake Bates had not made a field goal since high school. All we knew about the guy. 67-yard kick at Pro Day. That's all we knew. We knew we had a cat in a leg, but that's, that's all we knew. Makes a kick from 64, it doesn't count, they ice him, and he makes it again! Who makes back-to-back -back kicks from 64? <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> Not even, there's like 10 kickers in the NFL that could do that. Maybe. Maybe five. Yeah, how does the schedule work? So basically you play 10 games, you play every team once, and then the team is in your division, you play twice. So St. Louis and Michigan will not play again the rest of the season. Arlington and Birmingham, they will not play again the rest of the season. So you play everyone once, and then team in your division play twice. So you play five home, five away. You Ravens was playing 2021, 19, 17, close up. No, I, I meant the, the other game. I meant the other game. Not 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 the 2021 game. The 2013 Monday night game. The 2013 Monday night game. That was, yeah, that was 1816. That was 1816. Oh my God. Yeah, I, I was right. That was 1816. And it ended on a 61 year field goal. You know, Ravens Lions 2020 was 1917. Um, but I'm talking the Monday night. I'm talking the, the Monday night game. The greatest performance by Monday night kicker ever. The six for six game by Tucker. This game. From 61. Yeah, that was effortless too. That that was what was impressive. It, it wasn't like it, he missed short or like shanked it. It was right down the middle. Like he's not, he, he could do it. I was like, I, I get why you kick it there. I, I, I said it at the start. I'm like, this is not a dumb decision. Like I get why you kick it because the odds of getting 10 yards and going out of bounds, it's tough. And then you, you try a... And then you try a field goal from 50 plus anyways. I'm like, I get it. If he can reach, he can reach. And he did. <laughs> Unbelievable. What was the Lions? Yeah, they, um, although they, they were fine a kicker last year with, with Badgley. Badgley was fine last year. Jaguars could use him. I mean, holy cow. I mean, I'm not sold on Joey Sly. Vikings need a kicker. They didn't get Greg Joseph back. I mean, I could see that. You know, 2021 was Tucker with the 66 yarder, but 2013 was, yeah, he's had multiple games. If I had a nickel for every time Justin Tucker made a 60-plus yard field goal at the end of a game against the Lions at Ford Field, I have a two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it, it's weird that it's happened twice. Yeah, there's two games. There's two games like that. Yeah, I, look, he's not in the NFL just yet because, again, he's got a sample size of one. But if he keeps kicking like that, watch out. If he keeps kicking like that, you can bet your bottom dollar NFL teams are noticing. And honestly, you can bet with the way Taylor Russo going to play today and last season and that kick. If I'm a kicker, in the draft this year, my stock just tanked because why waste a pick on a, on a kicker? Especially because last year there were three kickers that got taken. Two of them might not be on the roster next year. Jake Moody was bad last year. Chad Ryland's not going to be on the roster for the Patriots. Anders Carlson not going to be on the roster for the Packers. Why waste a draft pick on a rookie kicker when you can just get one of these guys from the UFL that has proven themselves at the pro level like Taylor Russolino or potentially if he keeps kicking like this, Jake Bates. If Jake Bates keeps kicking like this over the next month, there will be a bidding war that ensues and the draft stock of kickers in this draft are going to plummet. And understandably so after what happened last year and what happened with Brandon Aubrey where he got the, um, where he got uh, with the Cowboys after his season in the USFL and he was phenomenal, obviously first team all pro and all that. Like, you get the idea. Yeah, now should sign that kicker. A lot of teams should sign that kicker. There's a lot of teams I just said I can't, I don't, it's not possible to kick 100 yards. I think it would be impossible. Especially with the trajectory, it would just get blocked every time. Oh my goodness. But yeah, a lot of... Uh, okay, Tommy Henry on the hill. And I, I, yeah, I didn't know if it was going to be Henry or, or Fott tonight. I didn't know if it was going to be Henry or Fott, but I guess Henry and then Fott tomorrow. Oh my goodness. 
Yeah, someone's going to make a 70-yarder at some point. With the right wind, like at mile high, I could see him. Strong leg. Look, honestly, Jake Bates, you put him at mile high with a strong wind, he could do it. He could do it. You know what? Based on how, he, how effortlessly he kicked that, I could see it. I... Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Munich Coast Scenario is a couple of games. Including the Super Bowl cough cough. Yeah, USFL beating the XFL. Again, the Battle Hawks, for those who, who are just getting into this, people do not realize the magnitude of this upset. I know it's week one, we don't know a lot about these teams, but based on last season, based on the rosters, based on everything, no one saw this coming. The Battle Hawks were minus 310 to win. Michigan was plus 250. St. Louis is minus seven as the spread, and that's that's a lot of points for spring football. Usually the spread's around four, four and a half, five. They're usually inside three, but the most you get is like five or six. You never get seven. That's really not two possessions, but you get the idea because touchdown, and you assume they don't they're not gonna get the conversion. That's six. So this was a monumental upset. One of the biggest upsets we've seen in in um in spring football in the 2020s. That was incredible. That was incredible. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I'm speechless. What a fun day that was. Six hours on stream with you guys. And it ends like that with one of the greatest kicks I have ever seen in my life. No exaggeration. To do that after getting iced too. And you got to give obviously Wes Hills a lot of credit in the running game. He was great. Getting to ball down the second half like he did for all of 2023. Um, crazy game. Crazy, crazy game. Holy cow. hundred people still on stream. This is crazy. I would do overtime if I was to go to the D-backs game, which starts in an hour. Um, wow. <laughs> if the season's going to be like that, I am, I'm all in. I'm, I mean, I'm already all in. You can probably tell by the studio setup, but I'm all in. Yeah, so in terms of battle between the XFL and the USFL, I think it's safe to say that, uh, this team right here did it. And the Roughneck Speed team from the XFL Conference, does that count for the USFL? Um, I wouldn't count it for the USFL, no. No, I wouldn't count it. I wouldn't count it. Trevor Lawrence should be way better next year. The Jag sh or This year, the Jags should be 10 7 better. I mean, he won't be hurt this year, which is good. Should be 10 7 better? I don't know. That division's going to be tough. And I just don't trust our coaching staff a whole lot. I don't think we're going to be 10 and 7 or better. Especially with, with, the, with the teams we play, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not crazy about it. Between the USFL and the XFL, which league more like pre-merger NFL? Which one other like the AFL? I don't know. I mean, there's not really... It's not really like anything. Because, like, they weren't competing on players. It's not like they were competing on players. It's not like they were trying to outbid each other on players. Um, I guess XFL, technically, because XFL was around for less time than the USFL. The USFL was two years. XFL was 2023. I mean, 2020... That was obviously 2020, but in terms of continuous football, 2022 was USFL. So I guess I guess XFL is more like USFL, and XFL had more innovative rules. So I guess that. But yeah, there's not really a good comparison. Not really a good comparison. Other teams playing tomorrow. We got the Defenders, we got the Brahmas, we got the Roughnecks, and we got the Showboats. We got these four teams right here playing. So final score: Birmingham 27, Arlington 14. Final score in this one: Holy cow! Michigan 18, St. Louis 16. Oh my god. Holy cow. I gotta catch my breath. Uh, but with that being said, guys, I think I'm gonna call it here just because I am going to the D-backs game and I need to leave my place in like 20 minutes. And I need to get something to eat because I've not eaten since breakfast today. So, thank you guys for tuning in. This was a fun stream. Again, this is the place to be for UFL this year. This is the place. We'll have videos every day on JG9 News talking about the UFL. Um, do I think they're gonna revive any AAF teams? I don't think so, no. Um, different branding and they have to buy the rights to those brands. I'm not sure they want to do that. I'm not sure a lot of people have close ties to those brands necessarily because it's been a bit. It's been a bit. It would be over half a decade if they revise some teams. Bates kick makes worse on top 10. Oh, it better. It better. It's number one for me. NFL using XFL kickoff rules. I like it. I like it. At least, at the very least, they need, they need to do something to make the kickoff exciting again. And this is how you make it exciting because you get rid of the concussions because the guys aren't running headfirst into each other at full speed. I, I like the rule. I like the rule. I'm a bit bummed we won't get surprised on side kicks, but really that happens, what, like four times a year? So, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with this rule. It's better than what we have right now. We're just touchbacks out of the back of the end zone. And it's a dead play. 78% of the time doesn't do anything. So, I'm fine with it. Again, tomorrow, 
We're doing both games starting at 11.45 Eastern, both games on ESPN. And again, be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss a moment of the action when we go live. Um, because we're going to be live for a lot of games this year. I'm talking, there are 40 games. I probably wager about 35 we're going to be live for. Plus playoffs, obviously we're doing all the playoff games in the championship. So we're going to be live for a lot of games. So make sure that you're here for, make sure they're going to be here for this. Because it's going to be a lot of fun. And hopefully you guys like the studio and the new setup. Again, if you want to join the channel as a member, be sure to hit that join button. You can't join on mobile, but if you join it on desktop, you get a lot of cool perks, including your name at the end of each video. Your name is scrolling across the line. You get green text next your name, and you get a lot of cool perks as well, including the ability to use emojis in the chat, like our two winner emojis. Um, let's just do that one more time. The Stallions and the Panthers, the two winners from today's game. You also get, yeah, the text at the top, or scrolling along. And again, if you want to bet on the UFL, tomorrow's bets, prize picks, 100% deposit match up to 100 bucks. Use my promo code Gator9. Helps the channel out a lot. And um, if you want some bets for tomorrow, again, if, if, if that's your thing, DC is minus 6 against San Antonio, and Memphis is minus 1 against Houston. DC, San Antonio, 43.5 on the points. Memphis, Houston, 40.5. Money lines. Um, they underhit both games today, just saying. Underhit both games today. Um, Memphis minus 115 against Houston minus 105. That's pretty much a pick -em. DC heavy favorites over San Antonio minus 278 against 225. So just something to keep in mind. Again, prize picks, 100% to 100 bucks. Gator 9 helps the channel out a lot. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Again, new video dropping on JG9, 9 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. And hopefully a JG9 news video coming out as well. A lot of stuff to talk about on JG9 news, including Zeke potentially signing with the Cowboys. We got some other stuff that happened. And UFL news as well. I'm going to recap these games tomorrow. So thank you guys for tuning in. And I'll see you guys tomorrow, hopefully. If I don't see you tomorrow, have a happy Easter if you celebrate. And take care, guys. Have a great rest of your day.